All right, let's get this party started here with, uh, you guys voted for, let's start with Amaranth, Caleb, Caleb first. Caleb Hammer. Uh, yeah, I'm curious about it. There's really not a lot I can really say. I will say there's some people in here complaining about Caleb's thumbnails. I guess they're very clickbaity. Uh, personally, I'm not a huge fan of like super clickbait stuff like this. I mean, they're definitely flashy and will catch people's attention to watch, which is obviously the idea. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I feel like sometimes you might not necessarily pull in the best audience with this kind of stuff. <laughs> it's like wild thumbnails. Comes off a little unprofessional. But at the end of the day, like, what do I know? I mean, I just have very basic thumbnails, so who cares what I have to say? Anyway, I'm curious about this. It's called E-Girl Exploits Simp Army for Millions. <laughs> Amaranth Financial Audit. Uh, very interesting. I can't imagine she needs a financial audit, but let's go. There's addictive things out there. Sure. Game, things like that. Corn is a addictive mm -hmm. industry. Right. How do you feel being a part of that, that a lot of people fall into a spiral that they just can't get up? I think the issue is just a lot of people it's a good question. can't accept reality and look inwards and improve themselves. Uh, maybe. I mean, listen, my thing is we have other addictive substances that are not illegal, so like, you know what I mean? But it is an it is like an addictive basically substance for sure. You feel no guilt that some of that money could be coming from addiction? Not really. Okay. No. Hi, I'm known as Amaranth. I'm a streamer. Ooh. My real name is Kate. I live in Houston, Texas, and I am 30. Uh, what's your social security number? Years old, and this is Financial Audit. I am. How old is she? In Texas, and I am 30 years old. Listen, I'm not going to lie. Like, I've seen some of her stuff before. I don't get it. I don't like to me, and maybe I'm wrong. It looks some of her assets look fake. And I just don't really understand like the the desire for things that look like that. I feel like that's something like an older generation of man will look at that and go like, oh yeah, like I like those a lot. Like you know they're they're big or whatever. And it's just like I don't know. I like some natural stuff more than anything else. But I guess some dudes like it. So whatever. And this is financial audit. I am a big fan of your money. Oh, thank you. You have a <laughs> lot too. of it. Yeah, you have mastered the <laughs> online influencing game like nobody else i don't it's insane it's insane how long have you been doing it i think eight years now in the yeah. summer it'll be wow. year eight so maybe i'll be making that much money at year eight thank you so much diabetic survivor for 16 months this is a caleb hammer video i can go into okay <laughs> thanks man i appreciate the, the input you know i don't even i don't even necessarily want to make like millions of dollars a year i just want to make like a quarter million a year that would be so incredible especially with the amount of work i'm outputting now because like i have a really solid work-life balance i think um, like I come on, like I work maybe, maybe I do 35, I mean, maybe 30 ish, 40 ish hours a week. I didn't get what I wanted. So there we go. Um, I do my own work. I have a decent, you know, I got some TikToks out there and I just been telling my wife and, you know, hopefully I have kids this soon and then boom, I just, I don't know. That sounds like more fun than hitting the grind too hard. But so the classic thing, right? Is three to five years is like the lifespan yeah. of an influencer. Right. How have you conquered this? Uh, because I believe that if you want something and you have a good opportunity, use it. A lot of streamers don't do that. What is it that you want? I want, this is very greedy. I want a big giant kingdom that I can call home filled with animals. I'm I mean, I feel, <laughs> I feel like uh, everybody wants a lot of money, so I don't really, I mean, everybody's kind of greedy. I don't know. You know, it is what it is. I'm talking like a thousand plus <clears throat> acres so I can have my animals. Jesus. I don't need that. Just, <laughs> that's a lot. That's crazy. You have it yet? No, not yet. When are you going to get it? I mean, there's Liver King Ranch. He already has it. He's in Texas. I don't want Texas. I want like paradise, like Santa Barbara. Wait, why do you live in Texas then? Houston. Yeah, I you... No, I, well, why do I live in Texas? Yeah, why do you live in Texas if you don't I was born there. I was born there, but it's, it's low Texas. And I don't go outside with being an online influencer. So it doesn't make sense to move when I have family here too. Ah, you're getting bullied on property taxes though. Well, I, have, I have an area that's, that's not that bad actually. Really? Yeah. Right. Dude, I get... Well, I mean, property taxes tend to mean decent support. I mean, like overall, you know, there's obviously people... Um, are apprehensive about where tax money is going to, but like overall, higher property taxes generally mean better schools in your area. It's not such a bad thing to support kids getting better schooling, you know? Bullied in Austin. Yeah, property Austin taxes. sucks. Yeah. Austin, not good. I love the city though. I love the city. The city is fun. The city is fun for like for Texas. Houston's boring to look at, That's but if you're inside, it doesn't really matter. So you want to end up in California? Yeah, Big or Cal California? or Colorado, one of the two. That'd okay. Yeah, that's a little bit more pricey than like a thousand acres in Texas. So that's the big goal. When do you yeah. want to hit it by? We're thirty. Oh, I don't now. have like a. I don't have a. I feel like the only thing that she'd have to do to change her goal is just move somewhere else. Like it's not. <laughs> she's not really in need of like a financial audit. <laughs> you know. Specific age, I think by forty, hopefully, <laughs> would be when you're gonna do but, this for ten no, more years. No, 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 no. But I, I know that I might be like slowly building the property because once you have it, if you, there's no buildings on, you know, it takes time to get all that stuff there and get the wells drilled and all that. So it depends wells if you- Wells drilled? What is it? What? Okay. Yeah. This it, is a lot. How I know, much, that's how what much I'm saying. Like, I don't know. 
the depends when I buy it, probably in the state of the market at that if point. If you did it now, how much would your dream thing cost? This dream kingdom. Dream kingdom. I have seen some really nice spots for like uh, I don't know, like ten million. You could do that if you wanted to. Yeah, but but it's irresponsible too. Ten million is wild, bro. Jesus Christ. When I have investments going on. Yeah. I'm trying to be responsible. That's a difference. That's why other streamers are doing stuff and I'm I'm not doing that. You think you're the most successful streamer? Mm, debatable. You gotta be in like the top ten though. I would say probably for women, yes. Absolutely women. Yeah. But it's it's still a male dominated (laughs) You know, industry in general. Yeah, I'm just rewind a little bit. I'm sorry to be responsible. That's a difference. That's why other streamers are doing stuff, and I'm I'm not doing that. You think yet. you're the most successful streamer? Mm, debatable. You got to be in like the debatable. top ten, though. I would say probably for women. I mean, money wise, probably. Thank you so much for the 15 month small gut from Devin Armstrong. W on 15 months, Papa. 41 months counting. Watching Twitch. Damn, you're an OG, brother. And yes, absolutely women. Yeah, but it's it's still a male dominated, you know, industry in general. Yeah, probably. Girl. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like <laughs> I would, I'd feel bad if I was like a woman trying to get into Twitch because it seems like it honestly kind of seems like the only time women really become successful is if they kind of they flaunt their assets. Um, I don't, you know, I don't mind it, <laughs> but I feel bad. Like if you're a woman that's trying to get in and, you know, be known for being good at gaming. Although I don't know how many women are necessarily good at gaming. I mean, I don't know. I'm not like keeping track. I don't really watch gamers, so I could just be wrong about that. So you recently <clears throat> moved over to Kick, right? I did. I moved Ooh. over to Kick, and I love it there. Oh, she stopped on Twitch, or did she just go to Kick as well as Twitch? That's interesting. It feels very probably the smart choice because Twitch is trying to crack down on some of the goonery <laughs> that's going on. <laughs> so it probably makes some sense to do. Very free, and I've- is Twitch really dead? I mean, I can see them floundering a little bit. Are they really that dead? They're probably not dead, but I could see them having a rough time. Heard you talk about that as well, but you weren't sure about like the gambling. Yeah, you watch that. Yeah, I'm yeah. a little nervous of state because they own it. Hey, thank you so much for the 13 month small gut. <laughs> thank you. And like, I'm a well, finance channel. I don't know if you knew, but um, what you can have is if you go into your settings, every user can do this. You can disable the ability to view any gambling content. Did you? No. Okay. <laughs> okay, whatever. Because okay, you don't care. No, I don't care. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would gamble if, it, if I got a sponsorship. Absolutely. Because yeah. I would do. Pay- you know, it's interesting because I know that they're going to get into the conversation, but they brought up before the concept of like, uh, you know, the type of content she, that she makes potentially contributing to addiction, which is probably, which is true. I mean, I understand that. But then also, I think that there's also legitimate video game addiction. So like how much do video game, I mean, and I think it can be taught. I mean, like, I think it can be kind of toxic. Any any addiction is pretty bad. Like a food addiction, I got that. Video game addiction, I mean, I, when I was younger, I had that. I dropped out of school because of video games. Came off my Ritalin and I couldn't handle myself and I got like addicted to WoW. Um, you know, porn. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I've, I've explored my uh, relationship with that, I guess. Uh, yeah, so I feel like we should all kind of haul it all out because I think it's China that even has legitimate video game addiction like rehab facilities from from what I remember. So I mean, I think everything's kind of addictive, no? Penny slots, right? I'm not. I don't like to gamble. So on actually, hey, thank you so much for the ten dollars, Christopher. First time catching a stream like your videos. Keep it up. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. On that making money because you make a shit ton. Do you, what's like your because you go everywhere. You go you go stinky. You go. Stinky? What? Wherever and anywhere. <laughs> I guess, yeah, the farts Ooh. are stinky, yeah. What's your bound? <laughs> what? Okay. I guess I haven't kept up on my Amaranth gooning lore. Jesus Christ. Um, what will you not do? Because people will follow you. I won't poop on anyone. Right. Or a- well, then I, what's the point? You know? Bed. That's good. Yeah. Um, I would say... Good for who, dude? I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. As far as, like, cancelable things, no. I would say, like, the basics, you know? Like, no... Uh, pe- yeah, you know, like that—the basics of humanity. That's well, like illegal. Yeah. Like, what's what legal? What's your legal <laughs> limit? I don't know if I have a legal limit. But well, you just said you wouldn't poop on someone. Isn't that legal? I think poop poos is legal, no? Honestly, mm. uh, yeah, I don't know. Why did you move over? Here? I moved over to Kick because um, Twitch has been making bad decisions. The streamers there have known that for years. I don't know if it's that. Sh- Here's the thing: I don't know that Twitch is making bad decisions. They're making decisions that would have a negative impact on her career, which makes sense. Thank you so much for the small god from Admiral Ad- Abdomen. But what I will say is that if you were a creator on Twitch, I could see you being frustrated about how inconsistent they seem to be. That's the thing. Because they seem to be having like a new policy every day or like like fairly often. Not every day, but you get what I'm saying. And then a lot of times they reverse the policy. And it's like they, they seem to not know what they want to do with themselves. 
So if I was somebody that was a career, I am a creator. I would, I mean, I don't use Twitch anymore. I like YouTube. It's consistent. I like the, um, I like the people better, generally speaking. Hey, what's going on, brother? I like the people better. Um, it's more rounded. Like there's still people from Twitch here, which is great. It's usually a lot of younger men. I think that's excellent, but there's also audiences of other people, like older individuals with different backgrounds, whereas Twitch is like a lot of young guys. And I like having a mixed, um, audience. So that was what kind of did it for me. And there was an inconsistency there. Um, you know, I'm a very simple guy, so I like kind of simple things, and, and YouTube does it for me. Twitch, though, has been making, like, all these constant moves of, like, let's do this, let's do this. Like, they were like, oh, let's let's allow more, like, porn, basically, on our platform, like, softcore stuff. But, like, no, let's actually crack down on it. Let's actually do this. It's like, pick, pick what you want to do. You know, they're going back and forth and back and forth. It's just so inconsistent. And it's like, you know, any creator would feel like, oh, man, like, exhausted by that. Um so that's kind of how I feel about it. Oh, shit. They keep having to lay hundreds of employees off like every year or so yeah. at this rate. Yeah, see. Um, and it's, it's really that. a hard business to make profitable because I think they exploded during COVID and now they have everyone wants to be a streamer. Most streamers on there yeah. have one viewer themselves. And that's really. Yeah. And so Twitch still has to pay like the hosting and the bandwidth for all those yeah. people not bringing in any money. Mm. So that's interesting. I, how much does it cost to, to, to do that? But it's, it's tough business to actually make profitable, especially when you have other like sites coming up who are funded already. They already have money starting out and they can just steal your biggest streamers or goes your biggest source <laughs> of ad revenue. Yeah, that's true. I honestly feel like um, TikTok is is like an underrated. It's under it. Look at the landscape and you will see that there is a single and I mean a single competitor that tw YouTube seems to be concerned with. And that is TikTok in every capacity. And I'll explain why. When you look at it, YouTube has implemented um, a new thing where it's actually like vertical streaming. You can now vertical stream on YouTube shorts uh, because of TikTok. Like it's a huge thing. I think that that's really where they're at more than anything else. YouTube shorts was created because of TikTok competition. And funny enough, you've been creating YouTube shorts has given TikTok the ability to say, let's not monetize things under a minute because YouTube will pay you 45% ad revenue on your shorts, which is, I think, a solid. So TikTok doesn't say, I don't care about that. Now let's shift into our market and say only things that are a minute and over to monetize, which again is a threat to YouTube. And guess what? If you're a short form content creator making videos that are probably um, anything I would say under 10 minutes, you're probably you're definitely not hitting your potential if you're not utilizing TikTok, if you're not dual posting on TikTok. Short form content creators are not on TikTok uh, or excuse me, are not going to be as successful on YouTube overall, I think, than on TikTok, especially starting out. Like when you are taking a dump, you're not going, let me check YouTube. Maybe you're saying shorts. You're going, let me check maybe Instagram, but mostly TikTok. And so you come across a two minute video, you can hold the screen, make it go twice as fast and get through a two minute video in a minute anyway. So that's your bread and butter. So like the landscapes are changing. Uh, when it comes to streaming, like I said, YouTube seems to have, see some kind of a threat in TikTok, at least to create their own vertical streaming platform, just to have it there. They don't seem to be too worried about Twitch. YouTube is just a consistent platform. They don't have to really worry about drawing you in as a YouTube streamer. Um, but TikTok really has, you know, they, they have they have the uh, their, their foot on the gas. So again, if you're a creator and you're not utilizing both TikTok and YouTube, I think are the biggest two. You're you're hurting yourself, honestly, especially if you're doing short form content. And honestly, you should be streaming on TikTok, too, unless you're making more controversial content like I do. Um, like sometimes it might be like, you know, we might use a couple of bad boy words, a couple of curse words. <laughs> so I don't necessarily feel super comfortable on there. I'm not trying to get banned on there, but uh, it's a solid platform and it's really easy to transition your TikTok to like a Twitch or a kick or a YouTube streaming, um, especially if you're doing gaming stuff. So no, I like that there's competition in the space now. Oh, I do too. We potentially talked to Twitch about doing a live show on their platform. They offered us $8,000 a month. That's awful. I don't understand because That's just thinking about an hour of time on YouTube, it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know what they're thinking. Yeah. Uh, Daddy Bezos has got something wrong going over there. And they, they take what, 40%, 50%? Uh, they're doing 50% of subscriber money. I mean, you keep all your donations, but like you get like Crazy. a fraction of the ad money. Yeah. I don't think you keep all your donations. Like if you do your donations to like PayPal, you get them all, but. So it's. It's not worth it. That's why streamers are leaving because they don't have the money to keep them anymore. So I heard, and I'm not a part of the streaming community. What do you do though? Because you have to fund like the creators that have no followers, right? You have to fund those people because you need like a, you need, 
to potentially be to be able to get like you know newer like hit creators like oh this person you know you, you understand what I'm saying like you need to be able to have the availability the availability to have newer rising stars so what do you do I mean maybe they could lock the quality of their streams to lower for people who don't do as well which I don't think is a bad idea by the way Hey, thank you so much, Thyologist, for 10 gifted subs, brother. I appreciate that so much. You guys have been going crazy lately. You don't have to go that crazy. I appreciate you guys just watching the videos and the with the ads on. But thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. But I heard it's a little bit of a risk sometimes because you're jumping to what is potentially a smaller platform, even though it's growing. Have you lost audience share? Um, if you look at the raw viewer amount, sure. But yeah. for someone who's getting paid to stream there, it doesn't really matter. And for I think for most people who aren't big enough to really consider Twitch like they're locked in career like they have made it then I don't think they have much to lose because the discovery is not where it is on Twitch pretty much on Twitch you are it's funny because I very highly doubt that they paid Amareth to talk positively about their platform I think for her it's just like yeah I like this better and like you're probably better off as a creator from my personal perspective that's what I think you know so they they're they've gotten uh, they're very they seem to kick seems to be very good at uh, publicizing, getting their streamers to talk positively about them. And another way that they do that is you'll see people like train racks go into smaller streamers lives and donate like $5,000, which is a lot of money until you realize it gets a million views on Twitter when they post it. And then all of a sudden $5,000 for, for, uh, for an advertisement, like what? That's insanely, that's what a low cost. So they've got, they've, they really have got, uh, <laughs> they've, they're, they're, they're pumping, man. Are they relevant or you're not? There's not yeah, really no, a lot man, of there's, there's some people who are middle ground, but usually they're middle ground for a different reason. Like right. they're a hot girl and they have different platforms that they use to be financially secure anyway. So they just stream when they're like, mm, I need some more subscribers to that platform. Plus, I mean, you've had what six major bands on there. Cap the amount of time you can stream if you have literally zero viewers. Um, I mean, I guess you could do that. Uh, I that's again that hurts the ability for a smaller streamer to try to start out. I really think you have to kind of lose money on those smaller streamers. I, I actually believe that. But I think that you can mitigate some of that loss. Um, I think that you can mitigate. I, I think like if you restrict the streaming of like quality to like 720p until you're able to hit um, like, what does it go? Affiliate. So there's like regular streamer, affiliate, and then partner. And you have to, you can't get 1080p to like partner or affiliate rather. I think that that would be decent. It's just, and let, maybe they already do that. I don't know, but I think that that would be. They have to. They should do something if it's that much of a burden on their on their finances. You know, something and, like that. And but I don't major think Kick is like, going to do that, right? No, but major is like what three days. Yeah, well, people people day. would say <laughs> that like you were privileged on there, and that's why you're able to come back. Like, well, yeah, of course, you made them a lot of money. At, at the end of the day, Twitch cares. Like any company cares about money more than anything else. Um, that's the number one thing that they care about. So. You know, they if they could get away with it, they would let her do whatever she wanted. But people will still talk negatively about it. So I, I mean, which you know, it's the public's uh, prerogative. So yeah, the they say, say that. that. They say that. Do you disagree? I disagree because there's a lot of girls on there who are coming back who make Twitch mm. even less money than I do. So I don't think it's like a privileged thing about like how established of a streamer you are. Yeah, I think I just am able to adapt and know where to toe the line, and I'm very communicative. With well, yeah, she knows where to toe the line, but her line is exponentially different from the line of anybody else. She gets away with like murder on there because again, she makes some money. So I understand it from like a from uh, like a Twitch perspective. I understand why they would give her more leeway. Um, but like she, it's not just like oh, I know how to toe the line. Like you, you, she's she's drawing the line. She's like creating the line. Like you know what I mean? And they're like they feel pressured. Like oh, you know, uh, this is putting them in a spot. Really is what happens. I mean, it might be a good thing optically for Twitch to lose her. Um, I just don't know how they're going to have sustainability in the long run. It's my partner manager. I'm like, hey, is this allowed? And so because <laughs> I reach out and I ask, usually they'll say, hey, this here, you cross the line. That's why we have to suspend you. And then I won't do it anymore. Right. Mm. So it's like yeah, most I don't think everybody would get that privilege of um, <laughs> being able to legitimately cross the line. And then only get like a little slap on the wrist and be able to come back. But, but again, like, you know, listen, if you look at it from a creator or a business perspective, like, yeah, of course, if you're a business, you're going to give her that like that leeway, that grace, because you're making money off of her. Um, oh, my God, I'm going to lose this game. But, you know, <laughs> of course, you're going to. But still, it, it will come off as like unfair to especially smaller streamers. Um, I, I kind of innovate in the space. I like try new metas. Band, though. Innovate in those boobs. Didn't was it Amaranth or was it Morg Pie who did the thing where they would put the screen like the green screen pants on or. <laughs>
I think they just banned that. No, oh, this is so good. I think they just banned that. No, where you can't even do that anymore. Which you probably shouldn't let people do that. That's wild to me that people even got away with that in the first place. Is crazy. I'm gonna end up losing. Oh, then I don't think there's a point. I think okay. it's stupid personally. You, it's like why would you want to like take your biggest streamers who people will mass report whenever they see one thing that could be wrong and then decide I'm gonna take away my own website's ad revenue for this amount of time? Like that doesn't make sense. Just. Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, you have to you have to punish people who do the wrong thing. I don't think that's like the hottest take in the entire world. <clears throat> you don't you you gotta you have to punish people who do something. And I feel like at the top is where it kind of needs to start, no? Um, because that's setting an example for everybody else for what you know is and is not allowed. So you kind of need to kind of need to you know put your foot down a little bit. Just tell them, hey, don't do this anymore. Every great video starts with an idea, but oh, turning that initial idea into a finished product can often feel like an overwhelming task. As someone who does YouTube full time, this is something I constantly Same have dude. to deal with. That's where InVideo AI comes in. InVideo AI is more than just a video mm. editing tool. It's your creative partner from the very beginning. With its intuitive interface and powerful AI technology, it's the fastest way for you to storyboard your idea and bring it to life. Dude, bring AI is crazy. If you want to check that out, go to the link in his link in the description if you want. Um, obviously, I put his stuff under my sources, but AI is scary, man. It's taking away people's <laughs> it's taking away people's jobs. It's crazy. Video for supporting this video. Can you do anything on Kick that you want to do now? Um, everything that's not like sh like super simple. Like they don't mind if you're in a bikini or whatever, as long yeah. as you're properly categorized. But like I couldn't like watch like corn on there. I don't know what YouTube censors. Oh. Is there a market there? Like are people on the hub? Do they do that? Like sh that might be an interesting thing. Should I do that? Should I <laughs> I mean, I don't want to whip it out in my reaction, though. Would I have to do that? Because that'd be interesting. Imagine doing a, that kind of reaction. It's very interesting. Prawn. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. prawn. So in September 20... <laughs> Didn't like Aiden say you could do that on there? <laughs> what an idiot. 19. You're playing with your dog, oh, then you had some uh, wardrobe malfunction. Oh, yeah. And you were banned for... The playing with your dog and you had a wardrobe malfunction? That's wild, man. Those, that's a sentence. That's a, that's a sentence, man. That's all I have to say. That one. Yeah. Very, well, it was a very short ban. And in 2020, uh, the exact... Your boob pop out or something? The reasoning behind the ban was unknown. You might know, but we do not so know. I've had a few unknown ones. Which one? It was only one day. And you lost 300,000 followers? <laughs> yeah, that's weird. I what happened where she lost 300,000 followers in a day? I don't know. They do, they, what they do also is they'll get rid of bots and not necessarily like streamers buying their bots, but people, viewers will often bot a streamer. They'll send a bunch of like hate bots to spam something oh, annoying. Oh, yeah. It's a Let's see. She lost three hundred thousand followers overnight. I mean, imagine if it was that fast. It must. It must have been a, a bot thing. I kind of wish that um, YouTube specifically had an option inside of its like you know whatever its programming. What would you even call that? I wish that they would have something in there that would. This is terrible. I'm getting like nothing. That would. Um, <clears throat> allow you, dude. This is literal garbage. I'm looking for this. Oh, that would allow you to get rid of followers who haven't engaged with your stuff in like a long period of time. I know that sounds weird. Um, but for me on YouTube, like my old channel that I now just put clips on, I think could benefit with uh, from something like that. That would be kind of cool. Honestly, I think that would be cool. I can't. <laughs> Uh, cause like, you know, the, with the followers that don't engage with you, I don't think that it's productive for them to be following you. Uh, and since I changed my content on that and made it a clips channel, you know, it's very different and people like older people that used to follow don't necessarily like that content, which I think is fine, but it'd be cool to be able to say like, okay, if these people haven't clicked on a video of mine in like six months, maybe just un make them unfollow me. I don't care about losing followers. Um, I do care about like, I do care about like the meaningness, the meaningfulness of a follower. Right, that's what I'd be more. That's more interested in personally. So then, if you have your channel like on follow mode only, those bots will have to follow you first, and then they'll do like their spam raids. So then Twitch just kind of like clears those out every now and then. Then you showed a viewer's profile picture on stream. One day ban, May twenty twenty. What did she do? Twenty twenty one ASMR. Oh yeah, I think he. What happened is I pulled him into a Discord because I was doing like a viewer program or whatever. Yeah. And while he was talking to me, he changed his profile to, um, you know, like a like a pee pee. Oh okay, interesting. I uh, was not aware of that. <laughs> okay. Sweet. Yeah, so Sick. most of the bands are even my fault. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. ASMR streaming on Twitch. Uh, I was borderline. I wonder how much, <laughs> I wonder how accurate of like a narrator she is in, the, in her own controversies though. Science on nature. Not everybody's as honest as me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Led to mass reporting, three day ban. I was doing yoga in tight pants while wearing a pigeon mask. <laughs> oh my God. Is the, is, the, is the main point. 
There's got to be something more going on there if that gave you a ban. Of your streaming. So obviously you got a sick deal now. <laughs> yeah, right? it's yeah, it's great. I love it. Was the main point of the streaming before then to convert people into your paid products like your OF subscription? Yeah, of course that was like a big pull for it. But then also to get people to donate to you like live now. Yes and no. Skibbity because I originally started off streaming as just a cosplayer and a gamer. I used to like cosplay from my favorite video games and play those games. On I remember like she used to go to gyms and just be kind of a rude piece of shit and like film and like the people. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I remember watching this. Like some of the people like the gym owners were like, hey, like you're I don't know. They, she was being disruptive in some capacity. I remember watching a video about it. I don't remember the specifics, you know. Which seems to be a big problem now. There's so many like w influencers, specifically women at gyms, that are like really trying to do some wild stuff. Um, and it's like I get film. I, I think it's fine to film in the gym as long as you're courteous and respectful and understand that like, you're not entitled to be able to do that because you know you want to be a fitness influencer. Like I get it, but there's a limit. And like you know, I don't think you should be doing OnlyFans porn in like the gym and shit. Like there's one girl that was like bouncing with the ball. Oh, I'm just wondering about my squats. Like no, you're not. You're very clearly simulating like riding dick. Uh, thank you so much, Kill Storm S H. Hey, Papa, I'm a big fan of both you and Caleb. I just tuned in as I haven't seen this video yet. What are your thoughts on Caleb overall? I I mean I don't dislike the guy. Clearly he has a little bit of an edgy past. I mean, but who does? doesn't um and he's successful i mean there's not a whole lot like the guy's not doing like social political commentary the guy does like financial audits <laughs> like he's pretty honest about like kind of content he makes he's not claiming he's the most amazing person in the world because i know some people have uh <laughs> some issues with some of his uh you know maybe the way he uh, has represented himself in the past dude there's no fucking way i'm getting there we go but um yeah, I mean, like, what's the, like, how high is the expectation on this guy? Like, you know, on stream that would make my cost. I think he's fine. Like, I don't dislike him. I enjoy his content every once in a while when I watch it. He seems like a decent guy. You know, comes for conventions. That's how I appreciate the transparency. I started off, and then I only really got into like the other stuff when I saw my fellow cosplayers like, um, like Jessica Negri and other girls at the time. What'd you just say, dude? You can't say that kind of doing like bikini mm -hmm. cosplays and i was thinking like what like that's not what the character wears you know as a as a young that's not what the character come on you, you, you know you're done <laughs> naive cosplay elitist like i used to be back in the day little nerd it was then i realized oh they have things like patreon where they're doing i don't think you can do like super inappropriate stuff on patreon you can't do anything explicit you can only do like like you can show like boob i think but you can't like do anything that would be like you know cramming your yams if you know what i'm saying uh there we go doing these photo shoots and stuff and you know what sells sells nature of society and i was like oh this makes sense did you feel comfortable with it like right out of the gate um i would say not right out the gate because it, it wasn't really a comfortability like am i comfortable in this bikini because i was already doing modeling in high school so i wasn't like oh never show any part of my body mm -hmm. but i was like i don't know if this is a stable source of income but i i was wrong <laughs> like somebody's coming in it i'll tell you that much within yeah within a few months i think i started streaming summer of 2016 and by spring of 2017 patreon was at twenty thousand a month so i was wrong yeah, yeah. Oh, and now i know funny. why they do it how long have you been doing of i think i started that wait what did she say she makes 2016 and by spring of 2017 patreon was at twenty thousand a month so damn i hope i make twenty thousand a month overall in my career like sustainable that's like my goal you know what I mean? like oh man like that's what i'm that's like that's like where i was like oh that's a good peak if i start making 20 grand a month consistently I can make enough money to just like kind of enjoy my like that's a what an incredible amount of money you know I only have to get this 21 so I don't care about I, this thank you so much for the five dollars kill storm message again yeah I agree with you I think he made an honest name for himself and most of the criticism is disproportionate with uh, what Caleb actually said and did yeah it is the Scott Schaefer is a weird guy man and like he's gonna get consumed by like this um you know virtue signaling audience that he's desperately trying to engage with so it's like whatever man like do whatever you want to do uh, Caleb pretty much decided not to respond to it, which I think was smart, and just kind of move forward, man. I was wrong. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And now I know why they do it. How long have you been doing OF? I think I started that 2019, roughly. We're at about a million bucks a month-ish. I know yeah. uh, you were at... Jesus Christ, a million dollars a month is wild. 1.5 at some point, right? I think yeah. when you were on the iced coffee hour, you were mm -hmm. about 1.5. Uh, Why do you think it's decreased by about I think third? COVID. COVID ended. Oh, people were just... Oh, yeah, a thousand percent. I mean, if that was all during COVID, COVID was huge. I remember when I first started streaming, I streamed to 40 viewers maybe. I would make $1,500 a week because people would give me so much money because, like, they had a lot of money during COVID. People were getting money to just not, not work, which I got. You know, I understand, you know, and uh, they were giving it to me. And it's like, wow, <laughs> how undeserved, right? You know, so, yeah, interesting. Just yeah, that's when I saw the uh, surge was in COVID. It went at 10 x during COVID. And the hot sub meta was like during that first year, 2020. In yeah. COVID. The J-O meta. I feel like a lot of issues we have as a society, like really, oh, started during COVID. <laughs> that's so frustrating. I just, okay. Um, 
a lot of people were home. It was depressing. Like, obviously, we needed the response that we engaged in. But, you know, people were depressed. They were home. They weren't really able to go out. It was upsetting. Um, you know, I get it. Sad stuff, brother. COVID, so those two things kind of just like <laughs> helped. So question on that, because in this podcasting space, there's, you know, lots of manly podcasts. And then there's just, you know, I think I'm just kind of just average podcasts. And then there's podcasts and a lot of different sides. But a lot of the conversation that's going around, and I'm not, I'm not saying I believe this, but I would love to get your take on this. A mm -hmm. lot of people would say that people that are in that industry specifically are just essentially taking money from the negative part of the culture that we have now of guys who are just alone, who are just struggling, have nothing to do. They're not going on dates. They're not getting matches. They're not even going outside and hanging with friends. Mm -hmm. And this is just kind of keeping them. This industry is keeping them in that really bad spiral that is happening right now. Mm -hmm. And then you being a major part of that industry, I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Well, here's my thought on it is that we set the bar for addictive substance selling at cigarettes and alcohol. And I think cigarettes and alcohol um, are worse than the type of content that Amareth pushes out. Uh, I think it's worse than video game addiction. I think it's, it's you know, so if we're setting the bar there, then like, yeah, sure, let her capitalize on it. Do I think that there's a problem? Oh, 100%, absolutely. Obviously, we need to deal with, especially a lot of young men uh, struggling in different ways. But I think that she's more of a symptom of a problem, more like, you know, that addiction is a, more of a symptom of a problem of like, you know, a lonely society because people aren't really going outside and interacting as much anymore because we have like a ton of technology. And it's not just men, by the way. Women are having this, a similar problem as well. It's just, I think, more difficult for men because we're expected to hit on girls first. But I think that like, you know, this is more of a symptom of, a, of, of our society and like technology. So, it's, you know, I think people, um, especially Red Pill podcasts, like to hate women. <laughs> That's why they bring the literal most <laughs> worthless women onto their stream. And then they're like, wow, these women are worthless. It's like, yeah. Like, but the reality is, is that they're also exploiting young men too. Like these Red Pill podcasts, like the whatever podcast, they'll go and find these women who do OnlyFans content and they will go like, oh, come on our podcast. They'll take pictures of those girls that are sexualized, make them their thumbnails and go, don't you think you're shit? And it's like, you're exploiting them as much as they're exploiting themselves and you're exposing your audience to them because you know that it'll get you views and they go on there because they know it'll get them uh, more bumps on their OnlyFans. That's why they're doing it. They're not doing it for fun. They're doing it because they know that going on the whatever podcast or going on the Fresh and Fit podcast, the, the, the audience members are going to go and jerk off to them and they're going to go pay for their OnlyFans. So, you know, it's funny that the biggest critics of people like Amaranth and, and, and on other people, <clears throat> and if you disagree with what she's doing, I don't think that's unreasonable, but the biggest critics of Red Pill podcast are doing as much as they can to capitalize in, uh, on these women as much as those women are. So... <clears throat> I always, whenever I see people put those two things together or like three things or whatever, how many factors, I always think that's not quite it because I don't think that one causes the other. I think guys who typically can't get their life together happen to chronically be online mm. and whether they search it or they see a related video or they hear their friends looking at it, they eventually come across the red pill view and they resonate with it. I don't think the red pill view causes that. I think they were already in a messy situation. Sure. And I don't think that it can really take their money if they weren't making any. So yeah, well, well, there's other. <laughs> Yeah, true. <laughs> Credit card debt, and trust me. Oh, true. We have a lot of true. people. That's true. <laughs> I've had people, multiple dudes on this show who are. I mean, I would say like not having a fucking father to teach you how to be a man is probably a bigger issue for these young men who aren't able to talk to women than, uh, you know, women on the internet with fake tits selling them porn. You know, any money on that OF, and trust me, they're <laughs> they're not making progress. I just feel like someone who was already who was inclined to do that probably already had debt. Anyways, and they would sure. have just spent it on another coping mechanism. So that's really what a lot of it is for them. If they listen to some of the messages, which I think some are right, but a broken clock's right twice a day, you know? Sure. So some, some, there's some truths, but if they were listening to the- Not if it's in military time, Amaranth. Truths they want to, and not just the truths that make them feel better, then they wouldn't be in that position anymore. They wouldn't be watching anymore. There's addictive things out there. Gambling, drinking, right. things like that. Obviously, corn is a- addictive mm -hmm. industry right how do you feel sure. being a part of that that a lot of people fall into a spiral that they just can't get out so on yeah. a similar vein i mean you know what i think that we really need to do when it comes to like you know of stuff we do this with gambling we do this with cigarettes we do this with alcohol we should do it with even marijuana uh we should do it with this type of pornography is that they should tax that at an additionally higher rate and they should use that money that they tax it on to help people escape their issues. And frankly, I'd go as far to say video games too. There should be a little bit of a syntax on anything that's deemed as some kind of an addictive substance. Um, and they should they should like help people get out of it. And like, yeah, I said video games too. I got video game addicted and dropped out of school. Um, 
you know, it, it's it's like, a, and I was doing well too. I was like an honor student. I still dropped out of high school. It's like, you know, syntax those and then like maybe use some of that money to fund addiction services to help people deal with these problems. Um, I, I don't think it's a terrible idea. That's where I would say the biggest problem lies in is that we don't treat it the way that we treat cigarettes and alcohol and stuff. You know? That's true. But the reasons why guys watch it, you know, usually is because they can't get female interaction or they feel like they can't maybe it's in their mind well there's a lot of that with dating apps yeah. though. there's a dating there app is. issue that's what I'm saying. It's not well, people would argue that like that availability makes it so that they don't feel like they have to at a higher rate but again that's like kind of you know i guess their problem I, I, no i'm not gonna leave video games out of it i listen you can be as upset as you want like i <laughs> you're just if you're just addicted just yeah if you're addicted just stop it's true sorry dude i don't know it's a hot take just debate it a little uh, excuse me tax it a little bit and implement something that helps people do and manage their addiction more i don't think it's a terrible idea man you know so yeah. it's not a corn bro video games are literally certified dollars for most uh, base game for uh, what well, i don't care i'm not a video game guy. like are you a fucking like i don't care the the best video games are the cheaper video games anyway like let's be absolutely real these triple a video games are dog shit um, they're overpriced. They tend to just have like they're just shit. They don't appeal to what anybody really wants. They try to appeal to everybody, which makes the game like not actually long term fun and engaging. But then you're seeing these like double A games and stuff, and like these other games that are coming out that are amazing. I mean, <clears throat> specific issue. I think the issue is just a lot of people can't accept reality and look inwards and yeah, just sugar tax too. Prove themselves. Yeah. And so they're just looking for cope that makes them feel better in that moment. And sometimes they watch corn. Sometimes they drink. Sometimes they do drugs. Sometimes they gamble. Sometimes they play video games. That's an addiction. And mm -hmm. they've spent. She's not wrong about that. Microtransactions. And you feel no guilt that some of that money. Not really. That could be coming from addiction. Not really. Okay. No. Like, I mean, I, f I feel like if, if, if you're selling, if we, if you're selling cigarettes and alcohol, I don't think you can really judge Amaranth for this, you know? Me personally. My actual opinion can something. And like, I'm obviously going to be a little more biased because like, I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. Like, again, I had a video game addiction. Um, and if I probably fucking, in, <laughs> I probably still have a little bit of a board addiction. Um, and I'm not even a guy who can't get girls. I mean, I'm ha extraordinarily happily married. It's like, you know, and, and it actually have gotten under control significantly since I've gotten married. But like, you know, me and my wife, we talk about it and like, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm, we, we've, I've been engaging in behavioral protocols to make myself a, a little better. <laughs> so I look at all these things and I'm like, yeah, these are kind of a problem, man. And it's not just losers who are addicted to this stuff, bro. It's like, I don't know. Like there's, <laughs> I don't mean to get so like weird and vulnerable uh, about it. It's embarrassing, but it's like, it's real shit, man. But I hold them all to the same. And it's so funny because I don't have a, I don't have an alcohol addiction. I don't have a cigarette addiction not anymore. I used to be. Um, it's just, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I have a food issue too. I fucking eat like a fucking animal. Um, not as much anymore, but still, I'm going to die here. I'm actually going to get really upset and I'm going to cry and fucking let myself on fire. I'm um, just kidding. But yeah. Adults should be able to do whatever. Uh, if churches start tax free, gyms should be tax free. No, dude, like, what if we taxed food? Um, what if we taxed sugary food and, like, we made everybody able to get, like, a free, you know, gym membership with, like, an actual decent personal trainer who understands nutrition and how to work people out because at the gym i go to i'm not gonna lie like there's they don't even they can't even teach these people how to fucking correctly squat so you know it's kind of pathetic for the f something adults want to do and you're making Agreed. your money and that's awesome that's so right. i personally don't care but i know that some people have that yeah opinion, so i guess like i've in my head it's always been like if I remove myself completely from this situation what's affected in the world sure just my life they're gonna find some other girl and do it so then sure. i stop feeling bad sure. okay yeah uh, so let's do your finances and then we can jump into some of the businesses. I thought you started farting. What the fuck? Because they're talking about farts where I got cited. I'm like, oh my God, let me spit. Just kidding. I don't like my wife's farts. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to help the Zooms. <laughs> You're helping. All right. So Platinum Card. I mean, you do spend a lot of money. Like wild money. Well, yeah, she has a wild amount of money, too, man. If I had a lot of money, I would spend it. I mean, I, I spend money even though I don't have a lot of it. I do overpay my taxes, so, like, we were able to afford a new washer, dryer, dishwasher. So that's cool, but... But it's okay. It's fine. It's okay, because I... Fine. People think... Can I swap a little parallel? Yeah, of course I can. I mean, do you want me to, like, record it? And I can show you guys my squats if you want. Think, oh, okay, I'll just... I'm doing a heavy squat on... Not, he like, heavy for me. It's my progress squat day on Monday if you want me to record it.
yells at people. Like, <laughs> I, I want to call out bullshit. You're, yeah, you're spending just as, well, It's also such a fraction yes. of your income, so it doesn't matter. But I also don't do like cope shopping and materialistic things for the sake of feeling better about myself. But I guess that's. I do. I like it. <laughs> I don't have to. I have the money. So well, oh, you, I can't say that. Yeah, you can. Okay, we'll just bleep it. That's fine. You order something <laughs> on Amazon and, and DoorDash every second of your life. Yeah, I know. What? Jesus Christ, that's wild. What's mostly what's the Amazon purchases? My uh, my wife also. Uh, just miscellaneous things for the business and then my nineteen animals. So nineteen. An she probably writes some of that off on her tax. I do too, man. I write shit off my taxes. Like if it's tax applicable, I'm like of course I am. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna write all the stuff that I bought for my literal like my office off of my taxes. You know, so animals. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of animals do we have? I have, I have three horses, three dogs, three oh no god. four bunnies. Oh my god, Fosh would love her. It's right now. And nine birds. Is that the expensive mortgage? Is that where they're all at? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much was the purchase price of that home? I'm curious. Um, I can't say because I will have people finding it, but it um, was around two million dollars. Okay, that's actually for Houston though. You can probably get a lot for that. Uh, yeah. Well, it's like it's like it's like multiple lots together vibe. Okay. Okay. Very yeah. cool. Jesus. The fuck. So you spent twenty thousand dollars. No, 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 no. You spent one hundred eighteen thousand eight hundred dollars, but then you did pay over time charges. Why are you doing pay over time? Someone who makes money. Um, because I like to have credit because I do car, uh, buy new cars every now and then. Oh, she's just doing it to build, build her credit up. I guess that makes sense. For like social media purposes, you know. And then I also... Um, so you need a leverage for those cars? Yeah, I just, I just like to keep my credit right. And then I also don't want to like spend a lot of money. Does it really matter to keep your credit right? I mean, like you make so much money. And, like, <laughs> it's like you buy anything with cash. Does it matter? Yeah, once because I have investments that I have to pay whenever they ask the capital calls. And so I don't want to be like, okay, here you go because I have the money, $100,000. And then yeah. be like, hey, we need a million. And I'm like... Okay, well, hold on. Wait, wait my, for my payments to come through. This industry is, pays a lot of money, but getting paid from sponsors and deals, not mm. always reliable on the t like. You have a rep in your corner, though, to like hound them down? And yeah, no, it? we do. I, they hound them. They do hound them. But yeah. even the hounding is just a process back and forth. And the capital calls like, you got a week. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> That's why I just do. I rather just have, uh, you know, pay over time stuff. Right. And it just got, it gets auto paid every month. Mm. I don't really have to think about it much. Yeah. You, when's the last time you've ever held interest on anything? On like a card? I don't know. Usually I just have it auto paid from my, from my checking account. Have you ever had bad finances? No. My credit used to be immaculate. I used to have an 830 credit score until I had my <laughs> an issue with my ex not paying her loans. And then like my lawyer had advised me not even to bother paying them in the meantime while we were potentially going to pursue legal action. And then my credit tanked 100 points. And then the lawyer refunded me the money and uh, in the agreement that I wouldn't talk about them specifically on social media because <laughs> they fucked bad they got fucked bad and i was like whatever dude i was pissed so you know thankfully um i have time to rebuild my credit you know it is what it is we've paid off half of her student loans debating on suing i don't even know if i want to care it's just like i hate i just i dislike her so much i would rather like personally if i could take the hit i think i would rather just not even sue because like, she was such a negative part of my life that like made me feel it makes me feel so bad about myself so part of me is just like, you know, if I'm making the money, let's let that chapter end and like, I'm happy, you know, I'm like with the love of my life. My life is like, probably very happy. <laughs> so it's like an emotional thing. Most of you be like, I can't do that. I got to sue. And it's like, ah, you know, if I could uh, be emotionally, it's like, damn, if I could take the hit, you know, if I, especially if I can get to that 20K a month, I'd be like, hmm, like, I'm so happy. Maybe that was just God telling me I had to suck a dick for a little bit. <laughs> it's the karma you know what i mean no who, who taught you uh a mixture of like some self searching just when i didn't have as much as first just you know small streamer uh, stuff i used to talk to other go. streamers um there's a bigger oh, streamer at the time like called Recful. i don't know if you ever heard of him but um yeah he used oh yeah he, i think he took his life man rest, rest in peace brother to uh talk to me in twitter dms we no you don't need to go and try to dox the people these are weirdos i made the legal agreement like <laughs> whatever man i don't i try not to hold on to grudges too much it's really not worth my emotional energy. Dude, I'm like actually having such a bad time. I'm going to die going through here. <gasps> but Talk about stocks and finances and things. And then I did some Googling, you know. That's dangerous, and then, I was going to say. Because people talk to stocks and finances to Boogie. You know Boogie. 2988 YouTuber. Oh, yeah. Boogie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Give me your opinion, Amrath. People did the exact same thing with him. They told him to put it in crypto. He did and oh, lost no. everything. Well, <laughs> Sorry, see, go ahead. <laughs> you have to, you kind of have to decide what's good and what's bad yeah. advice and talk to more people. And then like, you know, I have accountants too and they've kind of introduced me to other people and just kind of like build the network over time. But I've always been very skeptical. I don't like to- You should leak their paperwork. This happened like years ago. I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really worried about it. Just blindly trust what I read on the internet. I like to ask older adults who have done that before. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, my family doesn't come from money or anything. So sure. 
I had to learn okay. kind of like all as an adult. No one ever teaches you as a kid. They should in school. They don't. Well, that's usually everyone's excuse who comes. Yeah, I wonder if we did teach it in school, if it would even be good. I feel like what we need to do is why, why do I have to hire somebody to do my taxes? <laughs> I feel like it should be so much easier. Like, why do I have to even submit anything? You have all my fucking information. You know what I'm buying. <laughs> like, I shouldn't have to tell you anything that I need. Like, unless it's a write-off like, and justify it, that's fine. But, like, why aren't you just doing my taxes for me as the government? Like, it just seems kind of fucking dumb. So It's on the show that they've been using lately. I feel like excuses have a trend on my show. Like, everyone will start saying it within three-month segments. And right now is the, well, I, no one ever taught me. And I'm like, well, you're yeah. 40. Like, you could have. Yeah. <laughs> But also, you know, if your parents aren't getting themselves in that situation, why would they have to teach you? Because you don't, they don't, they don't know to teach you that if it's just common sense to them. So yeah, I kind of get that. Yeah. But I think. So. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. Like not knowing how to do your taxes or like save money particularly well is one thing. But like having thousand dollars in credit card, that's something you can't. Like that's not something. How to not have overwhelming credit card debt is probably not something that is probably something that your parents can teach you. Because credit cards weren't necessarily around back then. <laughs> Here's the thing. I feel like there's always the introduction of like a new technology that is amazing for the older generation because they've already set in their ways, but like devastating for young people. So TikTok, or, or let's just say like, uh, we'll say short form social media. It's really good for older generations. Like they've gone through their life. They've either had a job or they've, so they're in a prominent position or, um, you know, they have a decent relationship with it because they have other hobbies and they develop other, develop other things and et cetera. For a young person, you get super addicted to your phone, I feel like, and it becomes very detrimental. You're usually young. So well, obviously you're young. So you're probably not going to be like a manager because if you're an older person and you're addicted to your phone and you're a manager, you don't, you know, you're not going to really face any accountability. Um, and you have that like, so you're going to have a better relationship with it or you're going to have a worse relationship with it as a young person. It's the same thing with a credit card. People back in the day were like, oh, this is great. Now I can like take out a micro loan and pay it off and be responsible. But at the end of the day, I feel like for young people, it's like, it's a dependency. It's like, oh, I could just buy whatever. And they don't have the understanding of, of, of what the fucking like, what what is, what, um, how, what is it? Uh, interest works. Like my understanding, generally speaking, interest is like, you pay that amount of money. Like, it's fucking bizarre. Like, student loan interest is so weird. It's like you have to, like, if you have 10% interest rate and you have $50,000 worth of loans, you have to pay like $5,000 a year distributed in those 12 months <laughs> on top of your other stuff, which is crazy. Um, you know, and you just don't like realize that as much. You're making worse decisions. You know, there's a lot of different things. Uh, I don't know if I'm communicating particularly well, but school really should. Economics, yeah. all you learn about is supply and demand. <laughs> that works for women who are taught. We know what supply and demand is. But yeah. <laughs> I don't know about everyone else. That's true. I, I've definitely heard a lot of different arguments on that. They're like, Caleb, are you going to help Zeke uh, uh, collab with uh, Amaranth? <laughs> are you going to help Zeke collab with Amaranth, dude? You know, most people, like, when they take their little bull gen ed class, like, they're usually just, you know, they're just not really paying attention. So if it was actually taught in school, like, would people actually get things from it? I'd Maybe. still like to see it because... Uh, yeah, people would probably still get something from it. Maybe not everybody would, but I think overall people would. Even if we still get, like, 25% of the class to do it, that's still 25% more than we're getting Right. Now. Well, I think so. it would help, too, if schools actually did field trips that matter and take kids where they can see people who made bad financial decisions, like homeless people on the street. <laughs> I don't know if that would be, uh, you know, it's an interesting concept. I think that historically my understanding is, um, fear tactic, uh, education hasn't necessarily worked particularly well for the people who need it the most. Uh, like your scared straight programs don't usually work that well, uh, for the people who are like the most, it would be most, uh, likely to go end up in those situations. Um, the same thing with STDs and so or, or sex education sex education in schools like the scare like the scare tactic shit hasn't necessarily worked you know there's still people who get teen pregnancies i'm not sure if it'll be super productive to be like hey look at this fucking loser almost man you know what i mean i don't know if that would necessarily help but maybe a little wrong. field trip and then maybe they would pay attention to that class a bus field trip to <laughs> yeah. under the bridge yep okay but well, it's, like, it's an interesting concept prisons, the state capital prisons yeah. uh you know homeless shelters uh mental hospitals you know I guess. Mm. I don't know why the mental hospital would necessarily help, um, but okay. Well, perspective, I think, makes you pay attention. That's interesting. Because they, For... pay, they pay attention to Andrew Tate because he's flexing the Bugatti. Well, will they pay attention to their yeah. finances if they see a different example? What do you think of Andrew Tate? Because you're on the complete opposite side of him, right? Yeah, I think he I think he actually has some really sound truths. But of course, like his controversial takes, he has to. Otherwise, he's like, I, mean, this is, I hate, I hate, like I have, I have no problem with anybody who's like, I just don't want to talk about Andrew Tate. That's fine. He's a controversial topic, but I hate people that are like, he says some true things. 
please just shut. You're being stupid. First of all, he is a literal sex trafficking rapist. Okay, if you've have you're like any level of intelligent and kept up with the shit that's coming out about him, his leaked war room messages, the women coming out against him, the evidence that they have, this guy admitting that he steals money from people. If you have any knowledge of that, you know that this guy is a legitimate piece of shit predator who like his fucking bottom bitch was 15 when he admitted to starting having sex with her. So like, let's not sit here and be like, yeah, I think he has some. his takes are go to the gym, which is a great take, by the way. If you want to actually do this, actually look into like le- legitimate fitness influencers who go to the gym. Sam Silik is doing 10,000 times more to get you into the gym than Andrew Tate. Looking into things like like, like starting strength, Wendler 531, these different routines that'll help you pave the way and learn how to lift efficiently correctly that's actually helping they're not providing that they make you pay fifty dollars a month for some war room course that might have like a fitness thing which is dog shit his workout advice isn't even good it's it's he's he's the same thing he knows what he's doing but he's the same thing as the fitness uh as like the 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 personal trainer at the gym that's like that that makes you he tries to make you feel like you've done a lot without getting results so that you have a dependency onto them so like it's no, there's no reason to look into that. Like he doesn't really say anything. Saying go to the gym is good, but he doesn't help people stay in the gym. He's not really doing anything. He's not providing like productive resources for people to go and engage with. So like I, go look up Mike Israel <laughs> if you want to look up somebody who will actually help you get into the gym and stay in the gym. So like, oh yeah, he can, he tells you to go to the gym. And he also teach, teaches you women are worthless, and he's a fucking sex trafficking rapist. And it's like, wow, like what? Like I just it bothers me. Just say like, I don't really want to have an opinion on that. Yeah, that's nothing. There's nothing. Ridge Park's five by five for beginners. Yeah, dude, I, I think any five by five. I think that any high frequency, low volume uh, routine is excellent for any beginner. It gives you time to be able to um, consistently learn to engage in proper technique of your lifts because you're going to typically be squatting three days a week. You're going to be typically benching one and a half times a week, every other day. Same thing with overhead press, same thing with like rows, same thing with like deadlifts. These are great routines to get into and it helps you since you're doing them more frequently, you can like have more time to like, you you basically taking two steps forward, one step back, you go forward and backwards over and over again. You're learning to like actually engage in productive, um, you know, execution of your compound lifts. Those are excellent. Right, five by five should sponsor. It's not even about a sponsor. It's a good routine. Like right now, I'm running like a modified uh, five by five, where it's a little different. It's what I used to run um, when I had like pretty decent lifts. It was like my second run through. The most, uh, and it's my favorite because it's like high frequency, low volume. So I'm only doing like three things in the gym every day, and my numbers are going up. Back when I used to do it, like I was able to pull like 500 on it. I was able to squat 400 on that. Um, my bench was never great, but I was able to bench like you know, like 225 on that. Um, and we're slowly getting back there. You know, like that. this is, you know, and it's not something that's easy. Like putting on like your shit is not easy, but you need to learn the, the frequency and the consistency to do it. You're not seeing this message going through there. And again, look, look at Mike Israel. He's like an incredible, like he's another great resource, especially for, especially for bodybuilders. Um, he's also very honest about the fact that he's like on gear, which is all good, another good thing too, because you'll see, um, you'll see a lot of people lie about if they're on gear and that makes you feel like, Oh, how come I can't do as much as them? But like one of the biggest things I think for beginning lifters, especially, or lifters in general is junk volume. Like there's routines that'll be like, okay, go to the gym and you're going to want to bench. You're going to want to do incline bench. You're going to want to do a decline bench. You're going to want to do flat flies. You're going to want to do incline flies. You're going to want to after, in my opinion, but it's really not even an opinion. After you do two uh, exercises per body part, you should be done for the day, right? Um, if you're if you're not on gear, so like going in and benching and doing like flies and pushdowns, that's good. You're done for the day. And since you're natural, maybe you hit incline again. Like maybe bench two or three times a week. Just like understanding your ups and downs of how you're going to like engage. Like I'm, you know. So newbie gains are powered. Yeah, that's another thing. The newbie gains for the five by five are very, like, very powerful as well. So there's just a lot of things that they, that you're not getting taught by Andrew Tate. Like he's not going to teach you anything. He doesn't. There's nothing like productive about this guy. He's just telling you that you should have fucking. Uh, Mike Israel did a critique on Andrew Tate's workout. Yes, yeah, I know. I watched it. He was right. It was a big nothing. So I'm just saying. <laughs> it's my little rant. It's like every other motivational smart finance like life guru. <laughs> finance. Well, sometimes. Okay. As a Hustlers University program. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Where's uh, 
like OF University? Where's Amaranth <laughs> OF University? Well, I don't like encouraging girls to join OF because they'll think I can just join it and make a lot of money like all these successful girls. But really, there's no... You got to spread your butthole if you want to be successful in there, bro. All right, it's crazy. Reach on OF. You have to have followers on every other social media platform. So at that point, it would be... Yeah, that's true. You got to really get your brand awareness out there. It's probably like a very um, saturated market <laughs> for people making it a ton of content now. Yeah social media platform university and that's already so oversaturated and the algorithm is changing so much like the amount yeah the one punch man he did in prison because he obviously did more than just like that the amount of time it would take for me to give accurate information and stay up to date it would have already changed it's just not worth the time and most people won't apply themselves because most people drawn to that field are inherently lazy so i guess that actually is, makes a lot of sense it's actually very smart so a lot of people <laughs> that like are really good in their industry when they're like kind of done being on the you know, front side of it, the forward facing, they go into like the management side of it. Mm, yeah. yeah. I never really thought about that. Like, yeah, the people who want to go towards OnlyFans are probably very lazy. <laughs> it makes sense. Like we always talk about it. Like, uh, Hey, uh, it's probably all these like women who are very like disaffected and can't find the job in this. And there's probably a truth to that, but mostly it's probably lazy people honestly a lot of lazy people are like oh i can make a quick buck and i just gotta show my ass it's like yeah probably it's probably plenty of people just like that yeah. ever consider the management side a, yeah i have a management company oh um all right yeah does she like she runs it or she works with one uh, uh, it's called real work and we will help influencers like mostly a lot of it is of girls but we do have and then to be fair as well if you become successful at something it's easier to put energy into it because you know that it's gonna like you know, pr provide uh, productivity. Like for me, my content, like if I work harder with my content, like I tend to see uh, overall like a more positive money. So like I've drastically increased the, amount of, increased the amount of work I'm doing. I'm not working hard. I'm just working a lot more. Like last year, very lazy. I was coming on, <sighs> doing commentary and then getting off and posting the commentary and I was done. Now I'm doing like a lot of shorts work, which is like I probably double as much work as I do. It's not hard. It's like a lot of like editing, tedious editing and like exporting and blah, 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 like waiting for shit. It's not like super difficult. Um, but, you know, but I know that if I do that, I'll probably if I do it right, I'll probably see an increase in the amount of money I'm making. It can be difficult for people to do that in general, like, you know, which I think contributes to some laziness. If you don't feel like, oh, this will definitely yield a positive outcome if I do X, Y or Z. It can probably it'll breed a little bit of laziness, and like some more mainstream stuff too, <clears throat> and uh, we we help them like send out their content, get it posted. You know, kind of like like a, a personal assistant online vibe. Do, do you think OF like as a platform and work as a platform in the more modern day, uh, kind of preys towards people who are come from disadvantaged situations and they see that as their way out? Um, I think that's who it appeals. There might be a level of truth to that, but I feel like that's with like anything. There are there are plenty of jobs that appeal to people who feel like there's like no other way out, and they'll put themselves. I mean, like literally the military. <laughs> like like the, most people don't go to the military because they love fighting for the country. Most people go to the military because they'll pay for your fucking college. So it is similar. Um, I obviously think that the military is a more respectable job than um, OnlyFans, but like you know, it's kind of. I mean, the military preys on people to an extent that don't really have any other opportunities or advantages so feels to a lot like a lot of girls see that as a way out but it's really not because they're seeing the the side effect of having already achieved relevancy and you could mm -hmm. be relevant anywhere right mm -hmm. like like anyone who has relevancy can have success on of or any kind of like paywalled platform like patreon or whatever the the trick there is to already have the audience that yeah i mean that makes sense will go over there and convert i feel like it's somewhat similar for like reaction content too like you see a lot of big content creators that like already have been established that are able to do like this type of content and be very successful it's probably more difficult it's extraordinarily easy job but it's a little more difficult to like be an only a reactor um and difficult in the way of gaining a tr like a more attention not difficult in the amount of work that you're outputting obviously like i'm not saying that it's like difficult because i'm like a reactor only obviously if i was no if I was known for something else, well, I guess I actually was on TikTok, but you don't understand my point. Same thing with OnlyFans. Like, it's got to be hard to just become like that exclusively if you don't have any attention already. Um, but I think you could do it. You can't I just get random it, people to convert that don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. Well, to be clear, when I ask you these hard questions, I just want to make this clear because we've never met before. Doesn't mean I'm coming from an opinion. Your finances oh, no, are just real. Well, obviously, Caleb doesn't have an opinion. Like, he asks people if they want to do OnlyFans on their show sometimes, which, again, you know, which I think as long as you don't pressure them, and he always says you don't have to. It's fine. It's a it's a it's a considered like a legitimate business now. Is it weird? Sure, but if somebody came up to me and said, like, "Hey, do you want to do OnlyFans?" and I didn't want to do it, you know what I'd say? No. 
you know he's not he's not making people feel pressured or he's gonna fucking harm them if they don't do it so um it's time to grow up a little bit um and if you're like well yeah but they might be in a disadvantaged position okay and if they didn't get the offer they would still be in that disadvantaged position like what do you want me to tell you like <laughs> Like, okay. Really good. So I'm just oh, trying to bring you. some kind of interesting things on the top because I can't no, yell at you. There's nothing to yell. There's... We can... No, I was hoping you would just start the video off by just being like, DoorDash, 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 DoorDash. Well, it's okay. Why? In your percentages. <laughs> that's why I don't want, uh... I want people to know that. I mean, the show's <laughs> real. It's it's not fake. Like you're. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's one. A lot of times the difference between a good decision and a bad decision is how much money you have. <laughs> so if you have a lot of money, you can make bad decisions constantly. Percentage is like your personal spending. Yeah, a lot of people don't think I make as much money as I do, but then like, like you places like Forbes, who they require your like tax forms and you know your statements to verify and fact check, like New York Times articles, like they require that too. So it's, it's definitely there. You spent in your personal account sixteen thousand twenty four dollars on food. Bu my, bu on what junk food? Putting my bulk going out to eat essentially. Oh, it's stuff that you're not preparing for yourself. That's how we define it. Oh, okay. like, oh no, that's so much money. I'm like, I eat healthy. But... It's, 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 it's 4%. It's 4% <laughs> of your this. spending. Oh. So it's like, it's it's nothing for you because you don't have any bad finances. It's 4% of your spending. But even so. I feel like you get to a certain point and you make so much money that you don't need. But people just continue to do it because they want to have more. And I feel like that's why we should be having the conversation about taxing rich people more money. Because, <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're getting DoorDash like every day. And it's only four percent of your income. I think that you could probably pay like, significantly more in taxes to help fund like schools and shit. <laughs> so oh, you bring in two million dollars a month. Yeah, always get an itemized hospital bill, guys. Good advice. And it's less of a percentage than that, so it's oh, it's smaller than I thought that was. No, but oh, okay, down here. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think this is miscellaneous BS. Oh. Yeah, the oh. BS food is the green, I think. Oh, great! So it's even less. <laughs> Look at that. I was like, I don't spend that much on food because I normally just DoorDash. Oh. I don't actually go out to eat. Really, unless it's like, like I'm taking my team. Over. I kind of get that. I have more and more people have been noticing me lately. <laughs> and I like seeing my fans, but I could see like someone for Amaranth that's probably constantly getting noticed. Uh, where she'd be like, no, fuck it. Let's just door dash this. We're going to Nobu in Vegas. I've done that a few times. Well, I saw you at Uchiko. No, I didn't see you at Uchiko. I saw in your statements, Uchiko. And I love yeah. Uchiko. Yeah, I yeah. love food. I don't know what the fuck that is. I like um, J barbecue. It's pretty good. Japanese barbecue. Food. Food. But I don't, I don't, I don't allow myself to overeat. I don't, I'm not, I don't get hungry. I, me neither. <laughs> that hungry. I'm lucky, I guess. But yeah, not a lot of bull. In fact, I actually undereat. I don't know if you guys know that. I eat under the table so nobody can see me doing it. Food. And no, what's well, sad and though. Even still, it doesn't matter because you're bringing $2 million a month into the business. Not oh my God, dude. That's fucking, I want $20,000 a month. It'd make me orgasm, dude. That'd be fucking crazy. Oh, how, how's your tax situation? So you're going, we're preparing for last year's taxes, I assume. You're going, well, you probably do quarterly, right? Actually. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, me too. How's quarterly, your tax situation? Quarterly look? with extensions. Okay. So, I mean, that's pretty pretty okay. The, the annoying part is finding an accountant to be able to keep up with it. I've changed accountants a few times because there's just so much coming in. And it's kind of I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Kind of like a niche industry especially since i imagine she's trying to like for me i overpay intentionally i don't care but if you really want to maximize the amount of money you're making you probably wouldn't want to drastically overpay fifteen thousand dollars in your taxes every year <laughs> um and then you know get money back because you could have taken that money and invested it instead and her fifteen thousand would be like a hundred thousand so like well she'd probably be better off taking a hundred thousand dollars and like oh let me invest this in like some kind of a thing selling more fart jars or something so he's newer you think you i also only have and two general streams of revenue, which is like YouTube and TikTok. So um, TikTok's new for this year, so it's not exactly like a whole lot to manage for her. She's got her fart jars. She's got her kick. She's got her Patreon, I think, right? She's got an OnlyFans. I know that. I made probably a fansly. I feel like everybody does that, too. You know, you got like a million different fucking things you're doing. You get someone like almost internal at this point. Like the top economy yeah. in Texas, like you make so much money. Yeah, it's hard to find. Like when they say, when people say they're the top, right? It's like, how do you yeah. verify that they're like the top and that they actually know about like how to do this stuff? Because it's just yeah. a lot of different expenses so speaking i get that i mean i don't have i obviously i'm not like anywhere near there where i need like an independent finance person but like regular tax people like h and r block, block don't know what the fuck they're doing generally speaking or necessarily like you can't um i thought you have five dollars if i make 20k a month if i make 20k a month my wife and i are gonna go visit you barbecue okay that's what we're gonna do <laughs> we're gonna go to disney together um We're going to, what the fuck are they saying? Oh, they don't know. Like, I, I'm hoping. I'm like, hey, can I write this off? They're like, yeah, sure. I was like, okay. I hope it's true. I don't know. If, <laughs> imagine it's not. They're like, no, you're a fucking idiot. Like, I don't know. I hope I don't get audited. But I, you know, I don't think I will. Um, But who the fuck knows, man? Like, who the fuck knows? Uh, oh, my gosh. Okay. So, 
This is so stupid. I was looking at the questions. I they wrote down some questions. The producers wrote down some questions that I didn't write down. So I was just looking at his. I haven't seen this question, but Noah's asking if you think I should launch an. Oh my god, <laughs> dude, Caleb's just—he's just—he's just engaging with the degeneracy fucking allegations. Which, by the way, you know maybe that's one reason why I don't hate Caleb. I'm a fucking degenerate too. Okay, and I'm not like proud of it. I'm working on myself, guys. Okay, I'm purple pilled. But I, you know, I get, I understand gooning too close to the sun. <laughs> if so, any tips? If you should launch an anyone OLAP. want any of this? I think Let's yes, go, actually, because you don't have to post pictures of yourself. You could just post behind the scenes or like vlogs, or you can keep with your little fitness journey on there, and yeah. people would. You could do that, but who the fuck's gonna watch that? Pay to see it and encourage you and be motivated by it. Mm. You know the George Casanza picture, like the art painting? No. Mm. Oh, let me show you a picture. Okay, okay so it's so. this. It's famous. George Costanza, but we'll throw more, it on screen. One more level for my Cairo grenade to fucking finish this question. Hi, everyone. I, I love that. That would be funny. We're thinking if we hit like a million and a half subscribers. I actually used to have an OnlyFans. That was like a joke when I would just paint my stomach different things. It was fun. My wife and I did it like years ago when I was big on TikTok. I made a little bit of money. Um, and then it just got weird. And I like started to hate it because I felt like I was like selling my body. And I wasn't even doing porn. It made me uncomfortable. I was like, damn, like I really don't like doing this. Um, and I was like, oh, I kind of understand what it's like to do OF, like taking, I, can't, I couldn't imagine taking my boobs out. Well, my boobs, I did because I'm the man, but you get my point. That's fucking crazy. Even with Cameo, like I did Cameo and I like, I felt like a puppet. <laughs> I felt like I was doing stuff like, I don't know, I just hated it. People ask me for Cameos and stuff. I could probably charge like five, ten bucks each one and make like a couple hundred bucks a month. But I don't know. I just feel like I'm a pop, I'm performing for people. I, I really have, I'm very adamant about like when I'm not streaming, I'm not working kind of a deal for the most part. Um, you know, I just enjoy it better because I, you know, I, so I have that privilege to like not do so much and hate myself. You know, like other people can't necessarily do. So I like to set that boundary with myself. Subscribers will do that. Like, like my one and only only pose as me and the George Costanza. No, that's a good idea. But what you should have already is your as other clips kind of built up like a little library. So mm -hmm. people join. That's not like the only thing. Right. Oh, so kind of so? like not just a one off. Never yeah, go not a one again. off. But then like. Papa sexy. Yeah, I had a lot of gay guys hit me up, too. They wanted to see more. It's surprising. Have like your little like if you do starting to do uh, grocery shopping or meal prep, you could do like mini vlogs on there or even full length ones, whatever you want. And then like your fitness progress at the gym, like workout yeah. videos and stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I need to start that. Thank you. Yeah, they they all want. Yeah, they keep offering to go to the gym with me to get me to actually. I'm de I'm debating on what I think it's more of like a when I want to start doing like a fitness uh, thing and and how I want to do it. I don't think I'm strong enough yet, but I'd like to give advice to people in like a more permanent. Uh, thing and maybe like kind of almost vlog myself a little bit working out and keeping my progress going as like content <clears throat> i just don't know how i want i wouldn't i don't know if i want to do it on patreon if i want to make like a new youtube slash tiktok uh channel and then that's a whole conversation about an editor and like what i want to post how often i want to post and what advice I want. Yeah, i've been thinking about it but i'm not there yet like i i have like a lot of lifting enough lifting experience to give beginners help but like i don't have the <laughs> I currently not strong enough to be worth listening to so do it you should go to miss gifts gym Oh, okay. See, I didn't even know that was a thing until literally we were texting a couple days ago. Oh, okay. It's brand new. Um, oh, but yeah, you can like yeah. go there and meet streamers and get them to come on your show. <laughs> uh, so actually, this, that brings me to my controversy because you've been through a lot of different drama and we don't need to go through them all. There's, you know, some boxing drama. I think that's currently that kind fun. of ongoing, isn't it? I have no idea what the fucking box drama is. Uh, no, it was I'm gonna go on roids now. I might go on like when I get older. I'll probably go on testosterone after I have kids. So last year it was that was a Spanish streamer um, who, whose name is Abai. He's huge. In Spain. Only only because only because my tests will get lower as I get older, of course. Mm -hmm. And he was inviting international streamers too to come box in his big event, and I was going to, but then I had some like health stuff, so I couldn't. Yeah. I had to drop out of training, but that was cool. And there's some other drama we won't talk about. Then there's a bands and blah 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 blah. All right, let's go into the let's go into the meat. Yeah, meat. This, this is what we're here for. I'm always here for meat. Let's let's do it. What's uh, well, I, you know, there's so much spending that I think I'm just mostly going to call out the big things because again, yeah, it's DoorDash all this stuff. <laughs> like this is apparel sport and TCG player. You spent a decent amount of money there. Go to beauty shops. You Instacart all your food. It looks like. Do you cook yeah. food? Uh, not unless I'm doing like a specific stream thing. Yeah, you order all your food. Yeah. Yeah, like I'll cook my dog's food, but for my yeah. food. <laughs> What? You cook your dog food. Why don't you just put like duck heads and stuff in there? I've seen people do that. They put like duck heads in a bowl and like liver and this and that. But it's easier just to DoorDash because going to the store and then cooking it will actually lose me money in time. Yes, at your level, absolutely. So, and I, yeah, hmm. no, I get that for sure. Is that like true? I, f 
I guess, I mean, I guess it makes sense if your number one priority is making money, then like every moment of your life could be like making you money. I mean, she's probably right about that, honestly. But I just feel like mentally, I just like having my own time. Like I, like I enjoy going to the supermarket with my wife and shopping. You know what I mean? Like it makes, <laughs> it makes my mental health feel better. So it's like, damn, like I really, that's just crazy. Oh, you fucking bitch. Oh, wait, hold on. I can actually bait you onto doing that. I got to kill you in one shot. Oh, fuck. Right, um, one shot, do you gamble like this card Kingdom card games? Kingdom card games. Yeah. There was How- shit, if I had a ton of money, I'd be spending on a fucking mobile games too, girl. What the fuck? A couple things in here no, that sounded oh, like in-app games. things. I collect Pokemon cards. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's cool. what that is. Uh, we had uh, some clinic, some Kelsey. Oh, she's getting abortions. Seabold clinic. Thousand bucks. Uh, yeah. Let me see. I don't remember which one that is. Let me see. It's at the bottom. Oh, yeah. That's Easy. it's either. I think that that's probably my my medical stuff. Yeah, I had surgery recently. Really? So it's probably like, what like fake tits or something? Like stuff leading up to that. Is it is there going to be ongoing medical costs? I don't think so. I, I had I had cysts on each ovary that I had removed. Damn, that's rough, girl. That doesn't sound fun. No, nah, wasn't fun. But then there was like probably a bunch of like hormonal testing and all that. So mm, okay. Mm. Yeah. Now make two million bucks a month, but we're going to fancy places like Olive Garden. Love it. Olive Garden is kind of underrated, honestly. It's really good. I, I got to go back there soon with my wife. I, I I like their soup when I'm sick. Yeah, I like their unlimited soup, salad, and poop. It's pretty good, actually. Oh. I used I used to hate it, but like now I'll, I actually go, and I'm like, oh, this is pretty ponger. You're sick right now? No. No, oh. no, 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 no. Past I'm tense. good. Past tense. Yeah, um, this is older. I'm like an like anti-be-around sick people. No, no, no. Like they terrify me. Oh okay. Uh, locksmith, 260, 226 bucks. Oh, yeah, that one. I, I, I have my locks changed every time... Uh, yeah, going to the grocery store is like a mini date. I agree with that. Are you kidding me? It's fucking dope. I like going out. We went to Costco today. We went to the gym together, and then we went to Costco today. Um, it's just nice, you know. We went to got something to eat. We dropped a little bit. We got a new garbage can. Got like a some other stuff. Like cool stuff, man. I have an assistant that leaves because of like my status. I don't want them to, like feel like they're struggling for money and then come back and ha- go crazy and like try to blackmail me or something i don't not that i think that they would because I'm, I'm pretty good judge of character on who i hire anyways but i just have that paranoid feeling oh yeah, i get that especially in this space oh that's fair i just looked so. at your new assistant uh, yeah so she's great you think she, will she do that uh, not in this condition i don't think so something she have to get into drugs or something in the future but you never know you never know do you with your ex relationships with your employees do you usually end good terms bad terms that's good terms. terms okay good. good terms that's good and then you had a toy prop purchase 2500 this is where some of the the big purchases yeah, are. Those are the- toy prop <laughs> okay toy it's a sex toy like what are we talking those about those are of toys yeah. um oh that was a business expense technically yeah you write can you write off a big fucking dragon cock dildo as a the business expense <laughs> oh my god demand do i go a day without visiting costco you want me to be real with you brother i do not like uh yeah i go like three days a week i like legitimately go to the gym like i wake up i will typically fast i will go to the gym and then I will get out and I'll have a $4 meal at Costco. Like, I go to Costco fairly often. So, like, no, not really. I don't really go. I will go probably three times a week. It's cheap. I mean, I probably end up buying other stuff there, but I also need it. And I have I go to a different Costco every time. I'll take sometimes a very long trip. <laughs> Actually, often we'll go take a, a long drive to go to a Costco I haven't been to because I don't want them to hate, like, think I'm a fucking weirdo. Dude, I actually just literally lost the game on this play. And letter, 3,577. Oh, that, was that illegal? I think that oh, was. Oh, yeah. That was, uh, yeah, some legal expenses because there is an ongoing case right now. Um, there is a very. Oh, is that with her ex? Popular big franchise that has used my oh. likeness and image without permission. Oh, who's that? Toys R Us? Fucking horse cock dildos R Us? Who's that? Uh, and my name, and selling products in physical stores across America. So, what? What's the, who is this? Hopefully, they'll accept my settlement. But yeah, that's what that is: legal fees. Are you able to say what you hope the settlement might be? Not right now, because okay. I'm going back and forth, and we might negotiate somewhere in the sure. middle, or else. Gosh, I want a, I want a big company to settle with for a lot of money. That sounds fun. Oh. Except for the demand letter stuff. That yeah, sound as fun. Oh, there's a mall selling adult toys using her likeness. Wow. A knockoff version of that's interesting. I guess she doesn't want, she's obviously not going to say who, which makes perfect sense, honestly. Because also, here's the thing some of those toys might be like, oh, this is Amaranth's Vajingus. 
you want to buy that? You know, because they do that with porn stars. It might not actually be hers. <laughs> probably, well, it probably is. That would be creepy if it was. But so she probably doesn't want to shout out what the company is. Interesting. That's wild. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then something in I, Are, is Spencer selling it for real? I think probably the town you're around. There's it was. How would I feel if I didn't have breakfast in the morning? I don't eat until like twelve. Wait, ever? I, I said I fast before I go to the gym because I get a little bloated when I eat sometimes. I like to like feel consistent when I go. Yeah, so, something in Sugarland, two thousand dollars. Oh, but... that's my dog. He he's oh. he has to go to the vet a lot right now because he has cancer. Yeah. So. Oh, just kill that bitch. Well, that's mean. Sorry. Pet nice. insurance? Well, I don't know if it qualify under. No, I there. don't because I, I just think for most of my situation, like insurance usually will not apply. Obviously, it would have been good with cancer, but like that's such like a one off thing that you try not to think about. So in retrospect, I probably should have. But now that he has it, I can't. So how's the pup doing? Well, at least like when somebody gets cancer, the cancer doesn't win. They just have a draw. You know what I mean? Good. Um, no, he's, we're making his life comfortable. So mm. I have all the assistance. Yeah. I feel that sometimes it's just what it's about. You just got to wait for, you got to help him pass like a kidney stone. Giving him love and cooking him meat every day. So. Oh, all the assistance. Was yeah. there like an army of like. There is. Cause it's like when I'm doing stuff like this, like someone's got to cook for the baby still. Wow. How many people, people are there taking care of the, the. Uh, today three. So. What the f- That's awesome. <laughs> That's Thank good for the dog. I guess it's crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Someone's gonna take care of him. Lots of animals. I don't think I'd want three people to take care of me. I I like my alone time. You know, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're Uber eating. We're collecting cards. Another toy prop. Eleven thousand dollars eight hundred for this one. Which one? Which one is that? It was another toy prop from Spartan. Oh, oh my God! What are you buying for twelve thousand dollars? Oh, how are they uh, so much? I'm having a I'm having a, a custom robot made. No way. That's yeah. Cool. So. For it's, it's for a web. It's like a business sell? expense. No, oh, okay. no, yeah. for it's a business expense. Sure. I've talked to my wife about like um like a like one of those big toy things, like of a person, like an anime thing, like at least just a vagina butt. And she's like, no, nah, I think I'd be uncomfortable with that. I was like, all right, fair enough. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Like, <laughs> That's all I say. Okay, fair enough. That's her decision, you know. But twelve thousand dollars sex doll. That's wild. Make for the content because yeah. I get it. I wouldn't want her doing something like that either. So. Uh, yeah. <coughs> how do you post? Like, how often do you have to post as someone making that kind of content? Oh, to we, bring post, in this we much post. Money? We post daily, but that's I have my team do it. I only make content for it like two days out of the month. Really. Yeah, batch. You- what the fuck? I just wouldn't have admitted that. I feel like there's people who would be like, oh, disappointed, and like, oh, I thought this was every day. Batch it up. Yeah, uh, we okay. do like 12, 15 hour photo shoots and just. Oh my god, that's fucking insane! Your vagina's got to be destroyed after that. What the fuck? I guess it's got to be tough to like get yourself ready, like every day. So Jesus Lord. Then 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 the is it just pictures? You're making a million dollars. No, it's, vid- it's videos too. Oh okay. Yeah, videos too. Wow. What's a s- robot gonna do? Let's ask. Well, it's good marketing. <laughs> no, what what does the s- robot do? <laughs> that's what everyone wants to know, and they have to buy the video to find out, Caleb. Oh uh, okay. Good plug. Good. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Plug. Ah, we're going out. We're some, <laughs> went to a game store. Again, things well within your budget, bro. If I could, if I had the money and like the space in my house, like I felt good. And after I finished part, like redid my ba- my my kitchen and stuff, what I'd really want to do is probably collect old, specifically N sixty four games. Like that was my that was like my system. Like I loved that system. I loved all the games in there. Like I would buy like every N64 game. Nothing else. No NES. No Genesis. No this. No that. Just N64 stuff. That's how. Good card king. Who's at the, what? Kingdom. All that good stuff. And then it looks like you pay. You do lots of contractor things like Upwork stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what what is that usually like video editing or? Um, contractor just depends on like if it's. It's usually not uh, like tech. It's usually like around the house, like construction related. Oh, remodels, okay. fixes. Uh, my dogs, they were they were digging in the side yard and they didn't actually hit anything. Just laying against the house in between that and the fiber line bent my fiber line. Oh. So I was out of Internet for one of the days until the guy came in, came and resoldered it. So that kind of That's thing can cost like twenty thousand dollars in time yeah. loss. Jesus Christ. Wow. So then I had to, um, I was having to like build stuff to adapt around problems like this. And I built like a gate around the fiber line. Yeah. It's just random stuff. How many square footage is this like whole mini compound that you have? Uh, I think in building mm-hmm. space, like this. inside, it's probably like six to 6,000 square feet or so. I'm living my dream. Well, I, it's nice because you know, I, have, I have work. So interesting because I, I don't think I'd ever like necessarily want a big house. Like I'm a big guy. I, I just want a nice house. You know? I wouldn't want something like massively huge. Uh, some girls say it's, it's, it's too big. You know, I don't want anything too big. No, but seriously, I want something like 
space efficient, nothing like a huge mansion. I'd be afraid of ghosts in that fucking thing. You know what I mean? All I need to do is use like one piece of recycled wood with like a fucking ghost attached to it. And I'm fucked, you know? So something small. I mean, I would expand out this property maybe, but work and life separated because I have a house for me yeah. with my bedrooms, my animals. And then I have like a driveway. I don't understand buying arcade machines. Like what's really the point of that? And then I have like a six car garage. I mean, I guess that could be kind of cool, but I feel like the ports for like the actual systems are better than any arcade machine is. At least in my opinion. Um, that's just what I think. Set up and that, that garage is converted into a... Also, like to me, like I feel like, you know, if like, let's say I love pinball, I feel like I would rather just go to a pinball arcade than have a bunch of pinballs in my house or... Same thing with like, a, like just go to an arcade or something. No, I feel like that would be better uh, instead of having to maintain it myself. Like they have some cool games like Dave and Buster's or what this thing is just it's stuck. Okay. I feel like it would be better to just um, go there. I mean, it's more space efficient. You probably have more options. Like why, why own stuff? Studio. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So Are it's you a like, person? I would get like a well VR would be something I'd be into. I have to have one, but I haven't really played it, and I, I might be able to play it more now that I have more space. Uh, I'm not like a super big car person. You but said you sometimes have to get like a yeah, I, I car do. for content. Yeah, like I have a car for. Were you fucking the car? Uh, no. Like the strange addictions one. I don't. I, I don't just do the uh, lease and stuff. I do well for some things, but well, I mean, like what yeah. is what is like the content? Is it one off content or no? Is off. Some, I need like a, a nice car sometimes with enough space to be able to do car themed OF videos where <laughs> there might be something like Roadhead. We don't know. Okay, what like, can she write that off? That's wild. I feel like that's, you shouldn't be able to write off stuff like that. That's so weird. It can vary. Have I ever busted at Dave Buster's? Yeah, dude. That's why they called it. They used to just be called Dave. <laughs> Dave's chilling. And then I fucking went there and busted all over. It, it this varies. Is a, all right. Wow. Okay. It makes itself back. It's all good. It's a business expense. I <laughs> Those things leaping out. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. No. Lots of Etsy stuff. Some oh billable. Dude, you know what I want? One of the things I'd want to get, I'd want to go on Etsy and I would want to get um, what are they called? Game downgrades or something? Where you go and like you can there's I saw one person who made like Final Fantasy VII, the original for the N sixty four. Like I would want to buy stuff like that. Like somebody, somebody like make God of War one, the original, original for fucking N64. Like how cool would that be? Like that would be, that's the kind of shit that I'm looking for. Like how awesome is that? Like that concept. Get the fuck away from me, dude. Full hours, $2,000. Um, that sounds dangerous, by the way. What, like don't, what don't die if you're accumulating no, 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 all this it's money. Parked. Oh. It's part. I'm, I'm responsible. Okay. That's a whole <laughs> wild industry that I know yeah. nothing about. Yeah. Is you can do anything if you use it in a video. It's a tax expense. <laughs> Have you met with CPAs to confirm all yes. this? Okay. Yep. Is that true? Thank you, Amrath. I'm taking your advice, and I'm going to sue you if it doesn't work out that way. Anything I use in a video? All right. So I know a lot of people, they like to sometimes overestimate what is sometimes uh, tax deductible. That's why I do my horse. I, I like go to the barn. Vosh, what? You do your horse? My horse is on stream, and then everything horse-related is also a tax expense. There's no way that that's true. That's That should be illegal. Like, I think it's... Re like, computers make sense to me. Um, I don't even like video games. I don't even know if video games should be covered, you know? I don't know. Like, you put a horse on there, and you could write that off? That doesn't make any sense to me. That's fucking... That just seems abusive to the tax system. That's the kind of, like, regulation that that we need to... Um, implement because you should not be able to do stuff like that i mean like obviously you know take advantage of it i guess if you if you can but that's fucking wild like that seems on that shouldn't that shouldn't be a thing if it actually is okay uh lots of just eating out no uh, let's see anything expensive here dmca review sometimes okay. i fuck the burger it's and then it's free i get to write it off i just feel like you should you i, I really like i hope they audit the fuck out of her there's no way like like i understand that we don't always use our tax as well as a government but like this is a problem that's a fucking problem like i'm gonna i'm getting a couch put back there like I don't think I'm gonna write that off. Like I just I don't even know if you could. I just feel like that's shitty. I don't. Know. <laughs> like I'm gonna write off the desk, the computer, the webcam, the mouse. The, that that makes sense to me because this is like a very this is really I just work on this computer. I don't really do anything else. And like the only time I play video games is on the stream. So like I'm gonna I have no problem doing that. But I mean, dude, <laughs> um, I feel like it's just like like it goes too far sometimes, you know. 
I mean, you know, we're supposed to pay taxes for things. <laughs> it's a hot take, right? But I mean, I want taxes to go to schools and shit. So I'm gonna try to knock you down. No, it's a. There's a big ass spider in the guest room. Do you need me to come kill it? Right. Give me. A... <laughs> I'm gonna take a break. Give me a minute. All right, I killed the spider. Let's go. A chronic um, OF girl problem. People try to leak, so you have a team that goes and takes them oh, down. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> what are you talking about? What websites do you use for that? Because yeah. okay, as someone, not to get too much into my consumption habits, but I, I go the free route. Yeah, I mean, I would too if I was a guy. But yeah. oh, Caleb is a 100% a gooner. He's a fucking. He's a gooner. He's addicted. Um, this guy, he's he. This guy's a degenerate. Let's be real. I don't think that's a hot take at all. I think that's a. I think he even knows that. So yeah, like I don't really understand spending money. Uh, though again, I respect the other side of it. Like I do. I, I understand spending money on stuff like that. I think that there's two different types of people who spend money on content. The first type of person is like kind of somebody who's like a loser and can't get it any other way. And then I think that there's people. This is something I think especially men engage with that get a sense of like power out of spending money on stuff. Um, <laughs> not gonna lie. I think I might, I, you know, uh, working, you know, uh, praise be to God, of course, but I'm working on my issues. Um, that's probably the category I fall in a little bit. You know, you get like a sense of satisfaction out of it. I don't know, you know, probably not healthy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is what it is, man. <clears throat> like, yeah. Very well. well, I think it's more of a, do, well, it's, how, they, how they, does they're someone doing do that? that? Uh, you just have like a team that reaches out, in my case, and they will like DMCA. Websites will submit it to be like, hey, this is, you know, copyrighted to material. To, to any website that's in America, usually they have to honor it because they get scared because I have mm. the team involved lawyers with legal, like, notices. There um, has to be just like, I mean, the internet's wild. It's yeah. like the Wild West. It has to be impossible to get it all right. Oh, it's impossible to get it all. And there are some websites that are foreign where it's like you can't. Well, and all, all jokes aside, that's probably why they change their content to be a little different, right? Um, I, that's probably because like, listen, I've I've checked out some people's pages and stuff, and it, you know I think days have gone where you'd be like, oh, let me subscribe to you for five dollars and get all the content for free. Now it's like, okay, you subscribe for five dollars, and then there's some free stuff, but also, but most of the stuff you if you like the good stuff, you're gonna have to pay like money for, which makes sense because you know you're su substantially less likely to pay five dollars a month and then an extra twenty dollars for a video, you know. Um, so the free stuff that makes it there is usually like just that kind of. You know that free that you know well baseline content we'll call it that goes on OnlyFans and stuff can't do anything because they just don't honor those same laws and they won't respond but google will always honor it so you would just go to google and you're like hey remove this listing from the search results and boom gone hmm. so that's uh, useful out of the people you pay when you do these things uh, how do you circumvent that things that are um collaboratory mm -hmm. and the road uh, is, that, is that someone like you go find and hire or like no <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. No, I I, I work with a, like another agency. Oh, who does that? Yeah, and then that makes sense in order to get people to collab with it. Caleb's like legitimately invested. He's like, oh, so how do you? Uh, what do you do to find other people to fuck? <laughs> I imagine to pay like a commission on that or whatever. You know what I mean? Like a percentage through that agency too. They kind of like help the people that I manage. Interesting. Yeah, for the real work. We have the wine enthusiast. Big into the big into the glug glug. Oh, I get the wine, but I don't actually. Don't you like just taste it? You don't actually drink it or something. Drink like that? a lot of it. Weird. Yeah, it's more for my like social gatherings and stuff because I have like a bar in my house. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're rich. Four thousand uh, dollar trademark filing of some kind. It's exciting. Yes. Yeah. New things on the horizon. Yes, that's for an uh, trademarking my balls. Uh, I can't say the name because it's a surprise, but it's a good name. <laughs> it's for an energy drink. I'm working on that with another. It's gonna be called like fucking. It's gonna be called like Am Sweat. Am. <laughs> That's what it's going to be called. Streamer mm -hmm. who's much larger than myself in a terms of relevancy. A competitor to Prime, perhaps? Uh, Not really. It's just energy drink. It's not like watery. Yeah. It's going to be something like sexually related. Like, you know, it's going to be something that's like, oh, it'll get your dick hard when you want to fuck your wife or something. Weird. I, I don't even drink energy drinks. I try not to drink any caffeine at all, honestly. You know, I don't have to be this worried about it. But like I have a little bit of high blood pressure and high cholesterol and diabetes, which I'm getting more and more under control every day. But for me, I'm just like I try to effectively just cut out caffeine. Like I don't really drink caffeine free soda. If I do, I'll do it during the day, never like at night because I want to be able to sleep. You know, <laughs> trying to take steps towards it. We even cut out red dye 40. I've been drinking like the 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 squeezies. We call them the, whatever the fuck they're called. <laughs> With that, let's they they have like a clear version. So strawberry watermelon is clear. They don't have any of the red dye 40. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know, just in case, I don't know. It's probably not. A, it probably doesn't matter. It's probably all bad for you, but who cares? So you can get the like super caffeinated thing. version of those. Oh. As well. Moist energy. That would be interesting. That would work out if she was doing a collab with Moist, but I feel like his audience wouldn't be a particularly big fan of that. I didn't know, but. I Ozempic, no, nah, it's expensive, and I don't really want to get dependent on that because once you come off of Ozempic, um, like you, you know, you're not, you're gonna probably gain the weight back anyway. I'd rather just like learn to do it the correct way. I haven't been dieting. I've been trying to eat, be a little more health conscious, right? So like less French fries, more um, French guys. <laughs> no, but more broccoli. I'll ask when I go out. But um, you know, I've been losing body fat from working out, so that's been going well. I actually am working on KSI with a different business venture. Really? Yeah. Wow. My oh, goodness. Sure. Yeah, lots of fun things on the horizon. What is he gonna help you buy a fucking uh, a Hellcat or something? Reason. Who should Disney. be auditing who here? <laughs> is the question. Uh, it would be whom, sir. Okay. And yeah, your energy bill is expensive. Not yeah. really. Uh, it, it is. Makes it, sense. At this I point. think it's coming from someone who grew up in a family where the household income was just under fifty thousand for most of the time, and three three kids is what they. Well, that's kind of a mm, fifty thousand dollars twenty years ago. It's probably not that bad. They raised. Mm -hmm. That feels expensive for me, but yes, then I have same. to. I'm still have like a broke person's mentality. So I guess that keeps me from making bad decisions, though. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. Now, I know Houston's kind of like the armpit of Texas. It's like you don't get as much sun as all this stuff. Why don't you just solar panel yourself? I'm actually working on that. Yeah. But the permitting is the process. I thought about it. It's expensive to get solar panels. It's more expensive than I thought it was going to be. This is the annoying part. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. because I've been trying to get that since like last summer, and it's just such a slow process. Come on. That's insane. Yep. Yeah. Filing read contest BDE is what you put. Just get healthy when a habit while in Ozempic. So when you get off, it maintains. No, but that's there's something about Ozempic that like um, makes you feel fuller. That's the thing about it. Like that's the thing. It's not just like Ozempic. What it's supposed to do is it makes so you produce more insulin instead of like putting insulin into your body, and then it also makes you feel fuller. Um, so <clears throat> it's not really as easy as just like oh I'm gonna decide. To get off of this now, it's not like that simple. So this two thousand one hundred. Uh, let me see this one. So Contest. The bottom. Oh yes, that's for the energy drink because uh, there was a different oh. product that had a similar name. Man, so you're just you're just making products till the day you die. I can tell. I'm trying. Yeah, it's happening. I'm, well, as I know that, like you know, she's successful. So. Oh, I'm thirty already, and even though I feel like I look relatively. Is that what it does? It slows your digestion. Okay, there you go. The really young for my age, I, I feel like I, the the hot girl market is not reliable. You know, if I launch one product, they're all going to say I'm taking advantage of. If she's 30. You know, it's interesting, though. I feel like uh, it's possible that, like, as she gets older, you know, we're we're very used to, like, the um, young girl fantasy as a society of, like, oh, this is a young girl. Like, I want to sleep with this person. You know, you show porn of, like, 18-year-olds or whatever. Back when I was growing up, when I was still a kid, like, they would they would call these girls teeny boppers. As an adult looking at them, I'm like, that's kind of fucking weird. Um... I feel like as we all get older as a society, though, there's going to be a bigger market for more mature women. So like her getting older is probably not going to be a negative. It's going to be like a fluctuation with the market, especially since she has a parasocial aspect. Because I imagine that there's people who like her because like um, she's a personality that they get to consume. And that's like one of the aspects of it that's beneficial. Um, so the market might shift into like that more older way. Yeah, eighteen year olds. Like that's how it was when I was growing up. Thirty four years old. Thank you so much, AMVU for the four ninety nine, uh, or five dollars. I don't know why I said four ninety nine. Uh, first time catching the stream. <laughs> Keep up the good work. A bunch of uh, a sweating emoji, two tongue emojis is a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. I know it's not your first time catching the stream, bro. Of poor people because, like, because I'm a financial <laughs> right, show. I get the dilemma there. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Even though I would want most, I would want only people who can afford it to buy yeah. it. But they'll think I'm only preying on people who don't have money. It's so yeah. I guess. I guess a shit. Uh, and that, so you'd have to make like an app maybe for people to track their budgeting That's and then an app subscription for then it's like like five ten dollars a month or something it's a very interesting idea yeah and then they can like upload their own stuff in their statements so it's kind of like it keeps track of it for them and it's then if they want to pay premium you can have a, a team that you refer them to and it could just be outsourcing other accountants or whatever if only the people i was uh, working with on a project didn't take forever same that's why that's what happens in this industry and i think that's just everywhere it's just we didn't yeah. know until we started doing it like this is a long time key hmm. uh ceq barnt cb let me see 1300 uh i think that was my horse's this will help. lease like like the the stall like boarding post oak motors cars fourteen thousand dollars what kind of a car did she buy for only 14 grand what the fuck um oh the windshield uh okay so one of the cars i got recently and it just took a while to get it 
I got a Rolls Royce, but then yeah, within three days of having it, some hater, probably one of those eat the rich Facebook posters, came and shattered the windshield when it was parked, and I was just in the store for five minutes. Oh Jesus! That's why I wouldn't want to necessarily get a nice car because I feel like people it's like a, like a bigger target on your back. If you got like cheap car, it is what it is. Um, so I don't know. Like I, I can afford a really nice car. I'm also saving for when we have kids and getting like a minivan or something. I feel like it's more productive usage of my time. I was like, what? Really? Ridiculous. Yeah, so the like day four, it was already in the shop getting repaired, and that glass is expensive, that but yeah, I was gonna say. car insurance, I have it. I know that's new for you with guests on the show. Yes. Um, <laughs> you should have got a Cybertruck. It's unbreakable. I, right? I actually have looked into Cybertruck. Is that even a good idea to get a Cybertruck, though? Because one of the things that's uh, people will always say, like, oh, they don't build them like they used to, and there's a level of truth to that. When it comes to cars, though, cars, though, it is intentional. Right, so they don't build them like they used to with cars because they want. If you get into an accident, they want the car to fold because if the car folds, the energy goes through the car instead of through your body, and you're less likely to fucking die. So, uh, yeah. For me though, I just don't feel like they'll actually fit that much for a truck, okay. like space. No, they so like that's what I. Oh, right, I was like, what, what I was like, fucking went off on a tangent. So that's why when it comes to um, like a cyber truck, I feel like I'm hesitant about it because that gives me the same vibe as that thing is gonna. Like, you know, it's going to, you're going to absorb all the energy instead of it getting absorbed by the truck. Cause I think it's like a tank, right? So it's probably going to fucking kill you. I don't know if it's that safe. No, no. Yeah. Uh, myself and a couple of my teammates. We haven't had a kid yet. We're not, we're not pregnant right now, but like, that's the goal. Of course. <laughs> it's, we uh, drove uh, a Cybertruck the other day. Um, one of the first made here and it's small on the inside. Is it? It's like. It's interesting because the Kia Soul is like small on the outside, but surprisingly a roomy. Like, not comfortable. Yeah. I haven't been in one, but it just. From the appearance of the shape, it just looked like it would not be useful for big dogs or like anything that I need. So. No, we could barely fit the people in the back. I might get one just for fun because why not? But I don't know. Maybe. Thousand dollars on something that's blacked out. Uh, the dispute uh, dispute hours re BDE 1000. Yeah, because there were, you know, legal fees looking into the taken name for the product I'm when, working on. Oh, uh, when you fly, you just like fly everyone in the f like Houston area because this is expensive. Three thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars. What are we doing? We're just like uh, renting when? half. We're going first class in style for the plane when? i mean because uh, i have to buy early last month beginning of last month uh that's probably just the um first class tickets there and back for me and my my staff how many how many anywhere from like three to five people at a time three to five, okay but then you okay. do like there and back if you got the money man fuck it like take that first class baby great so see it, i thought we were upgrading up. from roadhead to plane head for content purposes. i you know for some reason might be illegal and flight attendants just aren't down with that Come on, join I've us in 2024, trying. flight. Thank God. At least there's some fucking, <laughs> at least somebody has values. <laughs> and then tens of thousands of people have been through our budgeting program and you need to as well. We literally have the lowest refund rate industry-wide. And the reason is people get value from this and they are changing their lives. If you need any help at all managing your money, this educational course is perfect for you. Check out the link in the description below. Yeah, I have, done, I have joined the Mile High Club personally, but it's hard okay. to make a video and do that, you know? All right. Ugh. Yeah, TSA might get involved. Let's okay. do that on the private plane next time. You have a private plane? No, but I have flown private though for. Oh, maybe you should make friends with Taylor Swift. I hear that she has uh, a private plane to literally go take a shit. Oh, because if you had a private, I'm terrified of plane flying. Yeah. And if you had a private plane, I would uh, try to ask you for a flight so I can get over go, get over uh, it. But next time I'm on one, we'll invite you. <sighs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Why are you afraid of flying? Yeah. Lots of Uber Eats, DoorDash, as it goes. The Ritz Carlton. Oh, I guess we've moved beyond just uh, Holiday Inn. Yeah, I, you know, I feel like. When it comes uh, to performance and plan. you got well rested. Gets, <laughs> everything comes back to that somehow. Like even if I try to steer away, it somehow comes back to just, <laughs> damn, just like, so can't bad. escape it. Nope. eBay. <laughs> uh, this is a fine show. Okay, well, what does eBay cost? Uh, it was four sixty six. That's actually an expensive eBay. For, like four hundred sixty six. Probably cards. Yeah, that sounds about right. She's like that obsessed with cards. That's interesting. Domino. That's just whatever. Or it could have doesn't been, matter. It also could have been plushies. I also collect like sex plushies, dude. Plushies from my favorite movie, Spirit, but all the merch is two thousand two. Spirit. The OG horse Spirit. movie. Yeah. Dying the Cimarron. <laughs> Something else in Sugarland. Two thousand. Haven't you heard of the Boeing incident? Yeah, I have heard of them. Yeah, for sure. It's in four hundred fifty-five. Oh, it's, if it's Sugarland, it's probably my dog's cancer vet. It's so Fair expensive. Enough. So expensive with cancer. Optics Planet. Is that your gym? Uh, Optics Planet. Mm, spent, I can't you spent a lot is. there. Seven fifty eight on this one, and then there was some more on the other one. Do you? Do you I got a crunch. I like crunch a lot, actually. It's pretty solid like, budget gym. Budget at right. all? Because some of these you Define, just don't know. I will. You track I will expenses. keep track. I will. Yeah, I do. But I, I mostly keep track of how much I have available in my accounts for like capital calls. It's more of okay. like that kind of budget, like knowing that something is coming up that will require me to to send a huge chunk, and then like being 
be, like policing myself on like stuff like Pokemon cards or whatever like expenses yeah. until because this is just your personal this isn't your business checking account yeah uh, this is your personal and you have about seven purchases a day on average yeah sounds about right some of them are subscriptions so it's automatic but still yeah. that's wild well, I, I also can't have even my imagine. I also have my staff who just will they have access to like the accounts well, the business instead this is personal oh the personal one mm it depends what it is sometimes if it's like i have them paying my horse stuff you know like or vet yeah. bills then they'll <laughs> my fucking horse stuff they'll just do it they'll go on there and do okay. it so uh, sometimes i like don't realize how many are going the other day because i'm just telling them to take care of it wow a true texan gun works gun works yeah i have pew, guns pew. and a lot of i've invested in a lot of ammo because you never know that's probably <laughs> damn she's a little bit of a doomsday prepper but also i get it i get it hold his value better than a lot of the stocks if it, it should it's like, it's interesting I'm gonna fucking die here because I can't move. Hit the fan. Scenario. Oh, you mean if the yeah, entire yeah, yeah, yeah. Went to zero? Sure, exactly. Bullets would be better. Doomsday yeah. prep prepping, <laughs> okay. but also you know I need bullets in case crazy people show up. So that one's fair. Yeah, uh, more expensive eBay. Uchiko, I love Uchiko. I like Uchi more, but Uchi. Is that just like a fucking Asian place? Uchiko, delicious. Yum 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 yum. Okay, and then more plane tickets, seven hundred bucks. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, and just a lot. It's really networking with Amaranth here. Can I take your private plane somewhere, baby? Please. <clears throat> you think? I think that. I think he has a shot though, because he gives me cuck vibes. You know what I mean? And she gives me vibes that she would want to be with a cuck a little, a little bit. Like I could see them dating for like a month. You know? Auto plane expenses. Yeah. Patreon. Okay, you're spreading the love. I still have Patreon. Yeah. yeah you're throwing some money towards other well, Patreons. I'm also getting Not money. Mine, from, but... I'm getting money from Patreon. Oh, okay. Hotel West Hollywood. Expensive there. Expensive insurance. The State Farm insurance. Two thousand four hundred forty-four. Yeah. It's, exp it's expensive fine. stuff. Uh, smoothie like a good neighbor. King. Smoothie King were door dashing. Come on. If we're going to door dash, at least have smoothies that taste like something okay. that isn't sugar. Hear me out. I had to do that when I'm sick and I don't feel like eating and I need nutrients. So I just do like the spinach smoothies. And I'm like, add all the stuff to okay. it. Okay. <laughs> I do healthy smoothies. Surprise, surprise. No interest ever paid <laughs> this year because, you know, okay. Hey, people have asked for a positive audit. So this is their positive audit for Yay. the year. Well, it's hard to be a negative audit when you're fucking rich. <laughs> $1,319 spent on this card. Steam games. Steam games. Steam games. Yeah. Wow. Only $10? $10.81? What is she buying? Is, is that like a, like a gotcha game that she's spending money on? Guns, horses, and video games. You're every guy's dream oh, girl. It's except, crazy. Except I, you know, I guess the good thing is, even though I have all those oh, so much dead. spending, at least I make I'm the money rather dead. than asking them to do it right. Wait, what? For a I dream not girl. Usually a horse girls oh, are like expensive. Okay. They're like red flags. She'll take all your money. <laughs> and it's like, well, oh, okay. at least I can you know, pay for my own Quest desires. Diagnostics. Staying up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where you get your blood tested. Up to date to make sure things are good oh, when collaborating. Good. Oh, yeah. You know? No, that's mostly probably the hormonal related stuff. Um, they get lab tests and things. Yeah, she seems like she has PCOS. So it's probably what she's dealing with. You give money to Twitch streamers. I like that. Yeah, I, subs I subscribe to my, my friends. Ah, there's some plush stuff. And Spotify. You can afford Spotify. Yeah. You can like afford I can. Spotify. And then more. My wife has a family Spotify. I don't know how to make access to get access to it though. <laughs> so that's for it's Twitch. Okay. And then here's your primary checking. We'll get into your business expenses in a bit. This is a little bit of money. No, 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 no. You're, okay, this is these are some I wonder why she agreed to come on and talk to Caleb. It's interesting. I wonder what it was about her. Uh or about him that she was like, Yeah, I'd like to I mean again, maybe this is the cuck vibes. Attractions. There's just Twitch, just Twitch, just five bucks going out here, five bucks going out here. And this must be from your company. Although, I mean, he's got a pretty solid following too. I mean, it's like everything aside, like it's just like, oh, let me go on this guy's audit thing. We'll have a little bit of fun, talk about my finances, maybe pull a new audience. Um, uh, Isolani? Yeah, is that that's, that's, your... that's my that's my LLC that everything is under, like all the Amaranth related things. Okay, so you transferred over a casual 220000 Yeah. Nice. Oh, and then you paid yourself two thousand dollars. Okay. Well, so, yeah, know. I pay myself because then it helps with taxes. If you like, pay yourself a salary you from an LLC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, rather than staying a sole proprietor. Like I sure. think in, there's a tax form somewhere. I think I gave her. I have it. Mm -hmm. We're in 2021. I did, did the switch, so it has like two different like classifications of it. Okay, that's interesting. So you like have money, you pay taxes on the business, and then you pay yourself. That's interesting. <sighs> Definitely beyond me. I don't know if I'd ever need that. So. Uh, to broker, I, th I think a broker, interactive broker. Yeah, hundred thousand dollars went out. I think, oh, uh, oh, that okay. one. Wow. Yeah. Lots of Twitch money if you going like out. Looking at tax forms. That's fun. That's thirteen million dollars in taxes. Thanks, Uncle Sam. Th wait, wait. How much? Good. You should be paying taxes. Oh. Wait, total? Well, like I ever? mean, like, like on the tax form that the, my, my net income is thirteen million, so it's oh. like I have to pay taxes on that. So, but oh. that's how much taxes you actually pay. That's why I do all my like. Because, like, in all honesty, if you make $13 million, you should probably be paying, like, $6 million in taxes. 
And you might be, that's a lot. Yeah, who cares? You make 13 million. You don't need that amount of money. You should have like an actual like but I doubt it. I mean, her 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 um what is it called? Whatever. Her tax rate uh, is probably like in the 20 percentiles, if that. She's probably paying like less percentage of taxes than you and I do. It's fucking crazy. Real estate type investments with like the gas stations and the, the orchard so that I can write those off and to, to just like subtract them from my yearly income and have a lower tax rate. I have big questions about that gas station coming up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Blizzardent? Uh, Some things I don't recognize because it doesn't sound like what I just spend endless on. like just little bits of money going out. Yeah. I'll yeah, that Blizz- oh, Blizzard Entertainment. That's what that okay, is. Okay, yeah. That's my WoW subscription, potentially. Or like uh, plushies. <laughs> potentially. <laughs> what the fuck? That I bought. Or was- I haven't played WoW in a while. I've thought about it now that I'm more comfortable in my seat, but I don't know. Is that? I don't know. There's always <laughs> conventions, too. So 453,447 oh. went in, 229,813 hours went out, ended with $444,902. Casual. Yeah. Oh, that was can- my Diablo purchases. I bought the horse skins in Diablo. Can I ask? The horse? Whore or horse? What are we saying here? You don't have to tell me because it's not your, uh, it would impact her personal things, but how much does she make? How much do you pay your people? Uh, They start off like around like 40000 a year. Okay. Yeah. Like starting and then, you know, they grow from there. People gave me hate for paying people $100,000 a year. They, they, really? They said I'm taking advantage of people, yeah. People are- Who's they? Probably like fucking kids. I don't know. Are, are my people just meaner or they're something? Just, they're just tr- trying to blackmail you into paying more. Oh, you mean your audience? Yeah. Oh, they're entitled to what they think they should be making from a rich, rich boss. But they don't realize the people oh, that they okay. work for daily, who they're accepting minimum wage from, are often billionaires. If you go up the ladder enough. That's probably why they're complaining because they're like, well, you should pay people more if you can pay them more. That would, but okay. <laughs> Worry about yourself. Really care, but... Here's uh, Wells Fargo business card purchases $9,000. <laughs> And Nintendo, Amazon. This is where all the Amazon is. It's like, brrr, just Amazon, 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 Amazon. Bezos all day. Amazon, Amazon. Bezos, Daddy Bezos. Mm-hmm. We got some Asian fusion food. Uh, Delicious. Expensive PetSmart trip. Makes sense. Yeah. Every time I go to PetSmart, it's like $400 minimum. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. that's just on the bunnies, honestly. It's spoiled bunnies. I'm like actually jealous. Aww. So do you have any animals? No, I have two dogs. Aww. But I, I, I couldn't do more than that uh, in, in my life. Uh, half golden, half Aussie, and then uh, half Great Pyrenees have something. We think alike. I have a golden retriever and a border collie. Aww. And I-, I don't think I'll ever get a dog, dude. I don't know. I'm not a big fan. of th- My wife, I, I'm like neutral on dogs. My wife's not a big fan. And it's an expense. So it's like, eh, do I really want to get it? You know? A Caucasian yeah. shepherd who's a guardian dog like a Pyrenees. You should have brought them. I should have. Should the border collie would have behaved. Everyone else would have been annoying. But the border collie. The beautiful. recording before. Well, mine are crazy. So I, I get it. Like mine are wild. But are you sure you only want two? Because I'm having puppies soon with the gold and the border collie. Oh, shit. They're going to kiss. Only if I can watch the dogs fuck. Sorry. <laughs> Am I enabling? We'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if I had more time. Uh, the, the guest uh, that we filmed most recently before you, their pup was under the desk the whole time. Oh. And it was awesome. I love it. What was it like in your balls, dude? It's kind of hot. I'm just kidding. I so much. I love I'm when people kidding. bring their dogs here. My, my people probably don't, but I love it. Probably, because I imagine they have to clean up the fucking poop. Greens, uh, this is Amazon, 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 Amazon. This is Amazon for eternity. We're just clicking buy on Amazon five times a day. Sponsor you me, Rough love Greens. That app. Please sponsor me, Rough Greens. I'm sure I haven't reached out to them, but should. The fuck is Rough Greens? Like a fucking supplement? Like Rough Greens. Ask them. Brad can do it, so can I. <laughs> Forty thousand dollars a year to call Rough Greens. Go get it. <laughs> they have a great life, you know, both the animals and my 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 <laughs> my, my assistants. It's a good job. It's fun. Uh, one million four hundred eighty-one thousand dollars in our business checking, which is great. It's mostly just transferring money back and forth. This is house staff cleaning. One thousand seven hundred fifty, then one thousand nine hundred. Um, then you got paid by Nova Inc. You get Novo. paid by them a lot. Nova. Yeah, that's one of my agency people. Yeah. Oh, very. They cool. help with sponsorships. Patreon. Yeah. Patreon quite small now oh yeah i don't yeah. really post on it anymore it's just people who kind of have 20 oh 30 400 a month on a patreon you don't post on it's wild gotten to cancel their subscriptions so <laughs> yeah hundred thousand dollars <laughs> in from phoenix internet l internet mm, internet oh, that just phoenix phoenix yeah that's just one of the payments oh. that comes in from my Gosh. from my influencer stuff i have a lot of stuff you have a lot hundred thousand coming in there hundred thousand coming in there forty thousand dollars coming in there i also 100, have like hundred thousand dollars oh my god that's so much money dude I could see why people are fucking hate rich people. Hopefully, you guys hate me one day. <laughs> Come yeah. on. Oh, Evolve uh, paid three hundred sixty-six thousand dollars casually. Yeah, yeah. Sponsorships oh. and deals and kick deals and everything. It's a monthly smoothies. I think we can afford it. I think we can afford it. I don't think there's anything wrong there. Some <laughs> payroll stuff going out. Okay, what's your full-time team size? How many people do you have on um, full-time? Hmm. Can we do OnlyFans together, Amareth? That's not me. That's Caleb asking. Hmm, that's a good question. 
because it's like I have like full time cleaners too that like will also do other stuff. Damn, dude, I need to get a fucking cleaner. Jesus Christ, my house is a mess right now. My wife and I've been doing so much work on trying to like just make it less. Which we actually been successful. We moved like we actually were finally able. We created a guest room. We put this room together. Um, we moved. You can see like I have my my right now at least I have my um futon back there again. <clears throat> there is the plan of like moving that into making it like another pseudo guest room and getting a new couch, which should come soon. We got a lot of stuff. And then I have like full time dedicated assistants. Yeah, just so, how many people do you have full time across the board? I would say probably like like t all, around ten, maybe. Wow. Okay. Yeah, because some people work from home too, so they don't come into the office, but they're like mm. editing, you know. Mm -hmm. More money coming in. Hundred there. Hundred there. Editing porn. Interesting. Okay. Hundred there. Hundred there. Five hundred nineteen thousand hours there. Uh, this looks like a transfer. Though. No, that's a talent agency. Yeah. $89,000 there. But you see, this is why like I haven't stopped, right? Because I'm like, I have such a good deal right now. And I'm only 30. What am I going to do? Teach me your ways. I'm <laughs> one year away from 30. And I feel like a failure looking at all this. This is... Damn, he look like... I like Caleb. Did he look, he look like shit for 30, brother? I'm 34. I, well, I probably look like shit. How do I look? I feel like the young... I feel pretty young today. I turned 34 yesterday, I think. Two days ago. And I feel pretty good. I mean, I feel healthier because I've been really hitting the gym pretty well, pretty effectively. So wild. <laughs> Give me the glasses. It's time for... Coach me. Bring me under your wing. My capitalism. Goodness. <laughs> oh. Okay. So these are, these are. I think this is the more interesting part of your finances because these are your investments. Yeah. We don't talk about investments as much on the show. We had uh, an increase of market performance. <laughs> I imagine there's not a whole lot of people with a ton of things, ton of investments to make. Performance. <laughs> I think in this one of forty thousand three hundred twenty-three in the most recent statement. JP Morgan. JP Morgan. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh. That, uh, that just happened, guys. Okay. Yeah. The the when it's like a three million, it's usually like a the gas station stuff, normally. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the gas station. But yeah, gas stations are like like three mil something each. How many do you own? She owns a gas. Okay. I have a few different ones. Like I think about three right now. I'm working on four. How many? How, how much have you spent on gas stations total? Well, each one I, I will invest oh, money into, and I think it's like, I think each is worth about like three to four mil. That's like the land plus all the facilities, right? Okay. I guess that's kind of a smart thing to invest Let's in. Let's call it three and a half million for all three each. Yeah. Okay. So 10, five, zero, zero. What's your uh, yearly cash flow for these? I'm not sure right now because I, I, I haven't looked at it in a while. Uh, I, I'm cats. really looking at this one. I, I, let, me, let me text. I can text my accounts and they'll know. We'll get back to that. Okay. They'll know. So I'm very curious on this. Um, so this is yeah, this is a brokerage, three million. Oh, we went to three million four hundred twelve thousand eight hundred twenty-two. I, I just call them. Hey, um, how much, do, like in the gas stations, have I invested so far? Would you say Fuck. that we can like? No. Yeah, the down payment was about a million each. We borrowed up to four. So, and what about the what the cash flow is right now? I know at one point we were looking at like eighty-five thousand a year profit from one. Bro, he's just fucking. He's just he's just calling him. One, <laughs> but okay. total. Yeah. So yeah, I don't really like know it off the top usually because I don't really look at them for profitability. It's more of just so I can reduce that on paper mm. to the IRS okay. how much oh, I'm so making because I have all these ex business expenses. What right? was the intent behind these gas station purchases then? As the tax. a tax vehicle? Tax vehicle. Yep. Okay. How much do you do you Jesus Christ. Isn't that wild you get to a point where it's like more tax appropriate to buy a fucking whole other business? That kind of makes sense as to why some gas stations are just shit because they just exist there to like make the money so they don't bother upgrading some stuff. Same. You plan to continue to expand the gas station empire? Um, I guess as much as the uh, clause goes on for, because like when I when I started doing it, and it what is she Turkish with all these gas stations? <laughs> still going for for a bit. I know I know Turkish people that own gas stations, so it's a little inside joke, gang. Okay? For now, what they're allowing people to do who buy stuff like the gas stations is you can take the entire amount of uh, like money that it's projected worth of the, like the facility, not the land, right? But you can expense that by taking that total subtracting it from your yearly income and now you tax on that new lower mm -hmm. yearly income yeah right so it's like a good it's a good <coughs> thing that i can just put money into and then later on i have these properties that i can then exchange later for like a down payment on like a better piece sure. of land so that's kind of like the, the thing right now shielding myself from like useless tax going to uncle sam and that i can later get useless tax again i understand <laughs> again i get it i i mean i understand why people think it's useless but like your taxes go through a lot of positive things just to be clear, and like I am frustrated by, uh, you know, the feeling that sometimes it's not used particularly well. But like taxes are going towards like police officers, firefighters, bridges, libraries, schools, 
um, in, in different ways. I mean, typically your property tax goes to schools, but then like, you know, your federal tax does go to the federal government, which does, does go to other places in the, in the means, like through the means of federal grants. Um, and like, I'm a very community driven person. Um, so like I'm, I enjoy, I, I silly enough, I enjoy paying taxes on ironically. I like, I actually believe in paying taxes. What the fuck? All right. Well, I, I fucking enjoy sucking a cock too. Apparently, Jesus Christ! I think like pull, they jumped at me a little. I didn't think. Okay, I'm just not used to that one. I can get like some kickback now, like two fifty thousand a year. Well, I was them, concerned for the cash flow itself, but that that makes more sense. Uh, to me. Yeah, it's not for profitability. It's just yeah. for convenience uh, later on the death, like the road, gold. basically. Later so down. you've put three million down in total, or four million down in total? Uh, about f- f- about four million down into it over like the okay. like all of them like net. So yeah, we're looking closer to like a six percent. You know, return on that cash specifically on a yearly basis. Is that two hundred fifty thousand? Yeah, I'm a lib, dude. Who gives a shit? Fuck off. Now it's before expenses or after. That's like what hits your. Why is that an F, dude? <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like I should pay taxes. Yeah, fucking tax chiller. Shut up, dude. All right, I I I care about my fucking country. Okay, pussy. Sorry, loser. Just because you're a fucking nerd doesn't make me one. Count. I think it's the account. Yeah, it hits the account. Okay, good. So, I mean, yeah. Like, just for example. I'm now, not running I, the gas station, by the way. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, just for example, though, the cash uh, flow percentage that I get on the cash that I invest in my properties up north in Michigan, I get about double that. Mm-hmm. But you're not using this for cash flow purposes. Right. Okay. I'm just a landlord. I just lease yeah. out the facility to the gas stations. So, I don't have really, like, anything except oh, that. gotcha. Okay. Yeah, That's it's very low management. You basically just are like... Tell, like you were, I'm working with an accountant, right? So I'm just like, yeah, let's do it. And then I don't think about it. And then I get money back. In the next 30 years, do you see the gas station? Business? I think by then I would have, uh, as a business, that's different, like as an industry. But I think for me, I would have probably converted them already into down payment for another piece of property that I want. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So you, because I'm just thinking of the industry, there's lots of tax incent- incentives right now to go electric. And there's, you know, I know it's small right now. The electric car industry is small, but it is picking up more and more steam. And I'm like, is the gas station business the industry of the future? Yeah, I think the good thing about gas stations is as long as like whoever owns the land gives permission and they, of course they yeah. will just put the superchargers on there. Right. Yeah. It's like, what's, absolutely. What's the difference? Yeah. You just can just have them on the side. I mean, they always have like a, like a car. I feel like it's interesting because the superchargers take so long. So I feel like um, that's probably not something that's going to be super, um, unless they get to a point where it takes. Well, I guess supercharger. I don't. How long does it take to charge a car with a supercharger? Is that different from a regular charger? I just feel like it works really well when you go to like a mall or something, right? Because you go to a fucking mall and you could charge your car. It usually takes like forty-five minutes. I think they go from like about, roughly to about eighty percent, um, and the eighty to like hundred takes like just as long as that. So it's not even worth it necessarily. But, uh, yeah, I wonder, I mean, if that's interesting, they could, like, you know, maybe a gas station can harness that by having, like, a traditional gas station, but also a destination spot where you go there, gas up your car, maybe you even park, um, and then you like, you go, like, watch a movie or something. But I wonder how, I mean, uh, things are going to shift in the future, I imagine, in that direction, so. Wash, and then, like, a bunch of parking space that, like, is not being. 15, the 15 to 20, 30 minutes full. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you'd imagine that you'd want, if you, you'd want to be, like, a business that, um, had something for people to do while they're waiting for that charge no doesn't that make sense you just have your little supercars there or buy a lot next to it and expand that and then when you sell these you're just going to roll them into the next property and you're just going to continue yep. to roll roll okay. roll roll yep okay. that's yeah. kind of why i want to plasma i haven't but... made a, a purchase yet on a big piece of land because it's like well right now like the market's kind of mid for that anyways and people then... want to get rid of that rule though mid. you can roll it roll i it hope over. they don't I yeah. hope they don't fingers crossed Okay, so this was this one of your smaller accounts. Yeah, the three million bucks sit in there. Then on this one, this one's interesting. We have twenty seven. Only your three million dollars in there. Million dollars in stocks, but it looks like you withdrew about one point five million dollars in cash potentially from this portfolio. What I think was that was for here? the that was for the private equity expense. Oh, okay. like one of those capital calls. Right. So I said you. they surprised me with how big it was. That's why I'm like, oh, I should I should do. Good thing I'm doing the payments instead of just paying mm. stuff full out because I need the, I just need the money to be in that account to withdraw from. And do you have someone that's like picking the stocks for you or how do you go about it? Uh, my accountant will bring stuff to me and then I have to approve it. Mm-hmm. They don't just do it without me knowing. We usually have a discussion about it. But yeah, they'll find stuff for me. Uh, but in general, like I know like safe stocks, like my personal knowledge that I've gained is just typically what I like to stick to unless someone else older and wiser is like, hey, this is an opportunity. I like stuff like Visa or um, like Shopify, things that aren't going anywhere. I'm like, oh, safety. Why not just buy the overall market at this point, though? I, I have some in that, too. I know we have a little. You have a little VOO, yeah. but there's a lot of single stock Yeah, picks. Yeah, I probably should be investing more into it. I guess right now I'm just trying to, well, until I get like the 
the private equity thing because it's only mm-hmm. set for like five million. So I feel like I'm a halfway there. Oh, guys, I understand exactly what they're talking about, guys. I'm a big, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big, I'm a big guy like the t- stock guy. And so I'm just making sure that I have enough guaranteed. Explain your private equity thing that you're involved in. Um, so I can't say the names because they're you know, sure. private, but. Basically, I invest $5 million into it total, and they are calling for that You know, every however many months in between. Random amounts, I won't know it until they say, give it this amount of time. If you don't do it, you get cut from the deal, basically. Um, and then it's going to kick back when it's all said and done, anywhere from, on the low end, 500,000 a year, if we're not doing anything for ongoing, and to a million dollars. If what you're is successful. No, I mean, if I like were to complete all the 5 million. Not, it's, sure. like, it's like pretty much like, locked in people are really good at it it's it's already working really well like that plus some other stock dividends already and that's not even paid off yet um damn just imagine having so much abundance that you could just like fucking throw your money around like this and like hire people that are intelligent to make you exponentially more money you really get to a certain point where you have so much money that the money just makes itself crazy is like fifty thousand a a month that i'm getting for not doing anything do you know what the private equity firm is doing on the other side fifty thousand dollars a month dude i wish i could do that just working what the fuck uh what do you mean by doing what are they doing with the money that is producing? Oh, the they're return? buying like they're buying like smaller mom and pop businesses or whatever right. that are reliable, and then they're investing into that. Bro, this is just like rich people are a whole different world, man. It's fucking crazy. Shit. Hey, baby. So the company that I was bringing me dinner. Where's the food? Oh no, that's why I asked. Well, you have to bring. If you're gonna wait, that's fine. But I didn't need just a drink. No, I was gonna eat. No, don't worry about it. Just bring this back upstairs. I love you. I, you would have to come down just for a soda. I, I wouldn't never ask you to do that. All right, I love you. I was involved in, <laughs> that I worked with before YouTube. They were bought by private equity mm-hmm. that does some similar to this. They raise large sums of capital to then go buy businesses. They've done very successful businesses, but then they raised the round. They bought that company and that company essentially completely failed. Wow. Well, this one is a little more reliable. Oh, I know. Yeah. The, well, I mean, the, the private equity <laughs> that bought the company I was in, they're like, some of the top, like yeah. they own GTA, <laughs> like you know, yeah. they're huge. So yeah, well, GTA can't make a game efficiently in a certain amount of time. So <laughs> okay, I'm just, <laughs> I yeah. just, I, I always have to push no back names. the overall. Uh oh, the meme guys, such and such came out before GTA Six. LOL. Well, confidence. Yeah. The over, like I'm confident. Someone... I'm confident. Okay. Okay. It is certainly riskier than just buying in the overall market, though. It is, but it's a, it's, it's good for me. So how much are you putting? How often into this fund then? I did, it's random calls. I think it, yeah. was it on there? Did it say how many? Was that, that the document for it? Do they have one ginormous fund that you're into, or are you buying into specific funds that they have going on at different times? Uh, no, it's just like I'm just investing into their total thing, and and they decide which businesses. Okay, sure. So I'm just like, here you go, trust you, vibe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's so far, they've been good. They've I'd been love more insights job. into that, but I know we got to keep things private. Yeah. But that's very curious. That's I think I'm that's I'm very interested in that. So in here. Caleb, what are you doing, dude? I mean, it makes sense. He seems to be very interested in making money. I get that. Um, I wonder if they have like a little off stream, like little kissing session. I swear to God, if I fucking die here, dude, I'm getting, I'm coming, I'm blaming you, Caleb. I swear to Jesus Christ. We have, oh, I mean, the dividends, so your dividends are wild. It's not my fault, guys. When I'm streaming, I can't pay attention to the way that I like to. So your last statement, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this was your last quarterly oh, statement. We brought in $84,365 for the <sighs> dividend investors. Like that's very... Very exciting. It is. Salivating. I know. That's why I'm like, ooh. Because like right now, I think um, once the private equity stuff is, is done, I'll, I'll be a lot more like willing to just invest in other things mm-hmm. after that. Just got to keep it tight for now. But yeah. Your biggest stuff. things are in BEP and BTI, TDG. Big titty GPD, dude. Uh, what are they fucking, th- what are these different like investment firms? Visa, there's some Visa, Microsoft. Microsoft's good, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can't, well, you can't just save stuff. It's like, what are those like, what are they called? Like S&P and stuff, like uh, joint stocks. What are those things called? Where's a bunch of stuff together? Don't make fun of my fucking gameplay. Do you use it every day? Probably invest in it, like tobacco. That's good Yeah, too. I saw a big tobacco one in here. People just won't quit. Well, now, yeah, now with vaping, yeah. I should, I, don't know, I haven't looked into Zen. Maybe I should invest in that if they do it. Zen? Zen? What is that? Zen's getting popular. What? What? You, and then with your, it's like a meme now. Your so. dividends that you receive, do you just reinvest them all, or do you withdraw them? What do you do? Um, a lot of it is reinvesting. Yeah, I usually won't withdraw unless like I have a capital call and, I, and my payments haven't come through in time. Mm-hmm. Okay. For my all my sponsorships and deals. And then in here, our private client with Chase Brokerage, they're obsessively calling me. By the way, are they? Yeah. They wanting to get your business, or yeah. do you have it? Mm. No, they want it. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, I'm chilling in Fidelity and Moomoo, just basic stuff. I like just doing my own. I just invest in the market, but 
it's, yeah, whatever. It's fine. So I think this is where you had some of your tobacco stocks, if I'm not mistaken. So there's just lots of movements in here. Are, are these the ones that come to you and before they make decisions or are they you yeah. have them on their own just going? Um, they don't come to me as much as like the gas station type stuff, like opportunities I have to look to. For the most part, it's automatic, but like I already know generally what it was because I already told them to do it. So. With this with this right here, do you know their average yearly performance over the history of their... I don't. See, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm curious how it compares to the S&P 500. I really am. I'm yeah, so I'm not curious. Sure. I haven't and then that. with whatever fees they have on top of it, even if they're doing better, is their fees just immediately just squashing whatever yeah. extra you might get? Yeah, I'm not sure. That for me, I kind of feel like the difference to look into probably isn't worth my time Why for right now. Why do you now. do it then? Uh, I just, that's what I started doing. I think it's just, it's working for me, so I'm just keeping it going. Okay. But the difference is to look around and compare. I probably would have to like put someone on that because my time is just not worth it to. Well, when talking millions, yeah. an extra two percent yeah, that no, you definitely. be savings. I just feel like right now, if I were to like go look, I'm like, oh, like the headache is not. Nah, like, you tell someone to look, yeah, right? Yeah, no, that's why. What is, Zin is, is a meme? What are you talking about? It's a fucking meme on TikTok. The Zins people talk about that shit all the time. It's like in the fucking. It's getting. It's like in the skibbity toilet range of being a fucking meme. What are you talking about, dude? Are you even aware? I have to, yeah. I have to tell them, but I don't know right now. Ah, there it is. Did a twenty-three thousand dollar buy on British American Tobacco, and you got a forty-nine thousand three hundred twenty-three. Um, 230, oh my gosh, 49233 dollars according to the quarterly dividends. I cannot. Cool. Generally, if it's legal and people use it to cope with their unhappiness in life, it's probably a great business to invest into. <laughs> That's okay. She sounds like kind of an asshole. <laughs> it's one thing to be like, oh, you know what? I have a skill set that is good for doing OnlyFans. I feel like it's another thing to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to attack everything that people are addicted to. I'm just in. I'm in it. Tobacco, alcohol, fucking OnlyFans. Like I'm just gonna make money off of people's <laughs> addiction. Just sounds like it. Just sounds more targeted. It sounds like shittier to do. But okay, yeah, do your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly, <sighs> but that's reality. Gosh, that's why I like TikTok. Five hundred thirty-four thousand three hundred fifty-six dollars in dividends a year. That's nice. Um, is it enough? No, I'm, I'm proud. I'm happy. Well, it depends what you're trying to get to. Right. I don't do a lot of dividend no, investing. Yeah. No, I, I'm happy with the progress on it. Yeah. Well, is that your retirement plan? Yeah. Dividends specifically? A fucking random video I posted today on TikTok like two hours ago. Three hours ago, 70K. Fucking Jesus. Um, I mean, eventually, yeah, I just want all the dividends to come for me not doing anything. Oh, I want all the dividends to come as well. Thing mm -hmm. is I guess they kind of do. Doesn't she get dividends from the guys coming? So that way I can just dedicate all my time to animals because what I really want to do for my retirement plan is uh, my own fun projects. Like I want a dog rehabilitation, like, re you know, to, to get yeah, I, a dog rehabilitation, huh? So like, what is that? Like you rehabilitate dogs by molesting them? Like I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm helping you Fido. Give me that red rocket Fido. That's not bad. Actually interested in that industry as well. I'd love to see how that therapy works. I have a friend who would like to do something like that, but with horses. Dogs who are both not really a friend, but uh, you know what I mean? We exist in a similar space here. So I know, I know the guy. He likes dogs a lot. I mean, horses a lot. You know, there is a, he actually has this interesting tactic of how to get the horse's penis to look bigger. <laughs> you just put it in the hands of a drawn child. It's incredible stuff. Really thinking outside the box. <laughs> and when I say that, I mean the, the legal window of consent. On the street and then ones who are going to be put down other shelters, you know, like bring them over here. Cause yeah, put them, instead of putting them out of the shelter, feed them to homeless people. I think that's a great idea. I'm on, I'm on board with that as well. Smart stuff. You would never, you would have thought of that. I'll have more space. Yeah. So I want to do that for dogs and then have get them adopted and stuff. And for Bobby, you sound like you make less than 100K a year. Um, last year I did. It was a bad year last year. I still probably did better than I should have. But this year, I mean, uh, I mean, I don't really want to talk about how much I made, you know, but this year we're on track to make a lot more things like veterans you know if they are going across to serve i want to be able to board their dogs and take care of them until they get back and if they don't come back you know sadly then we'll find homes for them mm -hmm. i just think it's like a lot of stuff fun stuff that i can do that i that most people don't get the opportunity to do that i'm excited about but i want to make sure that i have all my resources and things figured out so that i don't have to go asking for donations because that's unreliable because one of the shelters i looked up to i still do but during covid oh, why same name what named woody's gamer tag one said if the dog is big enough it can what the fuck they couldn't have like their charity auctions or like their galas they would have like you know, all their fundraising in person and then have like a big social media no, i don't want to flex on you guys i'm not making that much money presence and so they were really struggling but they have like such a nice facility and theirs is like two million dollars a year oh. to maintain like it's really nice and you said you only want a million oh uh, yeah a million. Well, only a million 
in a year. Yeah, yeah to start like looking for a ranch. I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah, before I start property hunting. Okay, gotcha. Because I would cut into it if I don't have like enough oh, internet, and that kind of gives Starlink more time to catch up to. How is the private equity paying out so far? By the way, is there uh, any payout so far? There is some. Yeah. Um. I think. I think at the end of this, I think when I get to the end of it, it's going to. Make hundred k five revenue. Me. <laughs> you don't need to know that. It's projecting to be like right, like the next year after the five million is paid to be like in the seven hundred thousand mm. per year kickback. Okay. You'd be surprised, brother. Oh. That's all I'm saying. No, it's pretty. It's pretty good. It's on track for that. Right now, I haven't like caught up with the, the most fuck? recent investment. I haven't looked at. Sorry. That. Gooning. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but. Yeah. And really, your only debts is the 1.34 million dollar mortgage of seven thousand yeah. twenty eight dollars a month. It's crazy. What rate did you get for that? I can't remember. Let me let me message because I was comparing a lot. Of I would remember the fucking rate on my goddamn house. <laughs> you can't remember. <laughs> what the fuck? The different Let's rates and options for a lot of different sure. properties at the time. So well, just... when did you get a what year? Uh, last year. Mm. 5.75% interest rate. Okay, so 5.57% interest rate, the 2.1% property tax. Um, what kills me is my mortgage on like a $800,000 mortgage is almost the same payment because Austin... Well, she's got fucking money to back it up, baby. Do you? Yep, they sure gold. do. But I couldn't live in Houston. Yeah. This is too it's... humid and this is... Is it that much more humid? I don't know because I live there It's decently and it's less sunny and it says there's no hills. Less sunny. It's all flat. I guess it just rains a little, a little bit more, yeah, but you get more we still rain. had a drought in the summer. I know, but it was it, awful. there's no beautiful hills. No, there's not. It's definitely on a topography scale much more boring. Oh, but when you actually think about it, the homeless eating stray dogs, you'd realize that the dogs would be eat terrible food and possibly not be nutritious. Yeah, but check this out. I don't care. I let homeless people eat them and die. No, I'm just kidding. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than eating nothing, man. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not going to be the most nutritious dog meat, but it's, this is what it is, man. And it's a highway. Yeah. And socially more boring as well. Yeah. And it's a highway. What do you it is that? very car dependent. Incredibly It is, but the highway makes more sense there. Like the the, the grid. Is well, like, with how they built the city, yes, yes. it makes more sense. It's they not could, like random turns on a hill. Like, oh, <laughs> They could have built the city around, you know, humans existing instead of the car. But, right. yeah, well, they well, built it around the car. Mm, efficiency. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> for, for working. Is everyone stuck in gridlock? How terrible is that? Me making jokes about homeless people die and they're just like outside my window right now crying and wishing that they could just afford something to eat, you know? <sighs> Damn, that's actually fucking sad. What am I doing with my life? Efficient? <laughs> Versus being on a train or something hmm. where you get space. I would say only a few parts of the the area is gridlocked. Uh, mm, it's actually not as bad. It's mostly like 290 and 610. But those. I played a tank so that I, could, <laughs> I wouldn't die when I played like an asshole. Because they're narrower. It's congestion. That's the issue. Same with abortion. Feed the fetus. No, because you know what? You can use the stem cells from abortions to like do a lot of like really positive medical things. Um. So, but they're work. They're always under construction oh, shit, to expand it. Well, yeah. With induced demand, time. every time you add a lane, eventually, within about Whatever. three to six months, it fills up. Oh, to of just course. About the same. Yeah, yeah. It's a process. Yeah. Okay. And then you have another mortgage, four hundred fifty-seven thousand. Is that a rental property? What um, are you doing with that? I, I have my former house that I've converted for now into just extra office space for like. You need that my, much? I don't need it, but I haven't started. But I can write it off on my taxes. <laughs> I don't want to sell it right now because it's appreciate a lot in value, and so I think it's going to keep doing that. And, no and um. Uh, I've considered renting, and I, I'm I'm thinking about moving them all to the main house. I'm just trying to get that. Yeah, I've, I've honestly considered renting too, but squatters' rights I feel like are too much. I was, like there's just like that shit going on in California where some assholes decide to live at somebody's house, and like that's it. Like, and then you're fucked from there. So it's like, do what I like? Would I want to deal with some fucking dickhead squatter? You know, I miss the good old days when the, when the police officer would turn a blind eye while you beat up a, a homeless guy living in your house. You know. <laughs> My understanding is that squatters' rights were created in case there was like a vacant property that nobody was using, and it's like, oh, I'm gonna go live there, and you know what I mean. Like, I get it there, but now it seems like people take advantage of it. Um, I just think it's fucking wild. It's like too much for me because it's, it's fucking crazy. So, I don't know, man. Like, I saw that they got rid of it in Florida. I think that like, Ron DeSantis is always trying to, which you know I don't like DeSantis, but kind of based, man. You know, but, yeah. Space figured out first before I just. Decide to kick my my own staff out and start renting it out. Sure. And then you got to have like stuff moved. I still kind of use it as a storage facility oh. too for my stuff because I didn't want to just move all my stuff and I didn't need per se. Okay. So that's your that's that's the finances that we have in twenty twenty two. You said you're worth about forty million dollars. What do you think you're worth today? Um, I don't know because I'm I don't know if I have to calculate that on a, like a how much do I have to spend versus like projected. No, not to spend. It's just like all your assets minus yeah. all your liabilities. I mean, it's probably. How much have I made this year? But what, what, what year was that again? 2022. 2022. Because we can't really calculate the private equity one as much, but what we have is about $35 million. 
Yeah, let me see. Hold on. We also didn't calculate equity in either the properties or the gas station properties in that as yeah. well. We don't know what they're worth. So uh, it. It's, you know, honestly, it could be like 45. Yeah, no, 45 would be, yeah. You know, if that $45 million was just in the overall market, $45 million, and you withdrew 3% for the rest of the year, which means it'll pretty much never run out, that would uh, only be $1,350,000 a year in guaranteed income for the rest of your life. So you already oh my God. You hit the goal but if you were in the I overall to, market. I would have to finish my investing, my private finish. equity to be able to get that much, actually. Well, no, 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 no. That if your net worth was all in the market, which is impossible because mm -hmm. you have some, you know, you have your personal residence. But just as an example, mm -hmm. if you were worth forty-five million dollars and it was in just the S and P five hundred, and you withdrew three percent a year, which is the number mm -hmm. that you hit to never run out of money based on historical performance. I mean, that makes sense. Wouldn't you get like eight? Don't you get like eight percent returns overall, like the S and P five hundred? Well, three percent would be like less than half of no, because eight percent, yeah, eight percent additional on top of what you have. Uh, yeah, I mean. Crazy. Yeah. That's uh one point three five million dollars a year for the rest of your life, guaranteed. And yeah. This guy's like really thinks about this stuff a lot. I mean, I get it; it's money, but it's just like it sounds. I don't know. It sounds miserable a little bit. Like I, I like making money, but all these, these things, things to think about. I just feel like, what's your, what's your personal life like? I mean, I guess he enjoys doing this more than he enjoys necessarily, like maybe human connection. I don't know. It's like so much for me. What's my opinion on breeding stray dogs to get meatier and fatter dog consumption? Uh, that's a really interesting question. I think that the only problem with that is that if you do breed the dogs to get meatier, um, like, like better meat, the dogs are going to be more powerful and they're going to kill the homeless people. So actually, it's kind of a solution. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But that's what you're doing. You're breeding like for the best meat. There's probably going to be very large dogs. They're going to be able to fight back more easily. So I don't know if it's necessarily a good idea. We might be like playing God too much with that one you got to think about the optics of the situation <laughs> i'm overcomplicating all this stuff i guess if you project for the future not just what am i getting right now in dividends kind of thing well that's even without yeah. dividends dividends will boost it up even more yeah well, with dividends i'd probably just reinvest it anyway uh typically because usually well, yeah i'm, I'm wanting record. to get like the without me like withdrawing i'm thinking like dividends i want like at least a million keep yeah. backing and then and then i withdraw dividends in what though highly performing dividend stocks or in just basic overall well-performing stocks that are giving smaller dividends. I just want to make sure of stuff. Because I do have so much different things that are kicking back money, right? So yeah. between like, you know, the properties and then the private equities and then, you know, the stocks themselves. Well, I'm just curious how you're know. taking investing because when it comes to me, I just go simple. I just go, I just <laughs> I go, go complicated. Uh, you do, you go very complicated. I feel <laughs> like, do you have a lot of uh, mouths in your ear when it comes to giving you advice on? I mean, maybe. Probably a lot of the guy's mouths in her ear. <laughs> money lots of different yeah and then i kind of have to weed through like who is really understanding of the situation and who's like looking at it from a traditional standpoint where it's like yeah i mean it got, it's got to be difficult i mean somebody would have to be like almost some kind of like an influencer streamer that decided to get into the market of stocks or something i mean maybe caleb could sat does or could satisfy that role i guess but... a stable job for years kind of oh, vibe you know like yeah, what's safe is that way versus like what's a good opportunity for my uh, unique so situation do you think the united states economy will be better by the time you're retired than it is today uh, bigger. No. bigger. Is the economy that bad? I don't think our economy is that bad. Um, I mean, our economic growth is decent, no? GDP growth smashed market expectations in quarter four, rising 3.3 and seasonally adjusted annually. I feel like we're actually doing better than people think. I think that there are really bigger. rough. Oh, bigger? Sorry, bigger. Sorry. There are rough aspects of our economy, specifically like our energy prices because of, you know, continued uh, conflict with Russia and whatnot. Um, but I think overall we're not doing the worst. And frankly, I think the biggest issue with our economy more than anything else is are these people, the rich people. And by the way, I'm not really blaming them because we'd probably all to some extent take advantage of the system if we if opportunities were available. Um, I write a bunch of shit off my taxes too. You know what I mean? Uh, that probably shouldn't be write-offs, but I know that they are. <clears throat> um, but I mean, th that's like a that's like a government problem. Like they're not taxing people correctly. Like tax these people more. Why not? Like it really for serious. Like why not tax these people at like a drastically higher rate? Um, like a, like an effective tax rate. Like I mean, if you're making a million dollars a year, 
why do you need to walk away with anything more than the 500,000? You might think, oh, it's a lot. Is it? <laughs> you know, there, there clearly is a point where that people get to where they have so much money that like they don't need any more and they want to make more money just because they want to see the numbers and they want to be like, oh, I want to be more successful. So if you're somebody who's making $500,000 a year or a million dollars a year, like you're not making any more money in my opinion, or generally speaking, to have like a better lifestyle, I would generally say. I mean, at that point, it's just like you're jer- you're, you're jerking yourself off, um, you know. And how many people could you help if you actually had a more <laughs> reasonable rate? Especially since I feel like we're gonna see more and more rich people and like more and more poor people. Like we're gonna see even more disparity with internet uh, and specifically technology displacing jobs, driving down wages, automation taking effect. We're going to need to figure out a way to um, implement like different forms of really some forms of like universal income. Honestly, that's a whole other conversation for like another day, but what the fuck? I, I won the level. I didn't realize it. Okay. Hmm. We average about what? Two to uh, one and a half to 2% growth a year, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Maybe three. What about like inflation? How fast is that? Oh, rising? well, they, they shoot for uh, two, but I think that's one so fast. They get about three and a half on average. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be bigger. I just like, well, one second. By the time, because it depends when I retire too, I guess. 3.2% is the average US GDP growth. You know, it kind of makes sense though, because I'm pretty sure, I'm fairly confident at this point that Amaranth has PCOS. And um, because what she was saying, and that makes sense, why she acts like a little bit like a man when it comes to making as much money (laughs) and as money as possible, you know. Because I mean, that doesn't make you a man, but I mean, you got all that testosterone going through, you know. You know, maybe that's why she's so driven, like men typically are. Uh, she's tax hybrid smart enough to know how to pay herself as an employee. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is like it's a smart tactic from her perspective to like, oh, she's smart enough to to basically dodge taxes legally. I agree, that's a smart play. You should be doing that. But you shouldn't have the opportunity to do that to the, the to the degree that she can, right? Like that's the problem. Is that our government is like completely ineffective when it comes to that, um, and that's like the biggest issue when it comes down to it. So, um, that's what I'm criticizing more than anything else. Like again, it's the structure. People are greedy fundamentally. All of us are to some extent, and but if we live in a system that doesn't allow us to be as greedy, we'll be like a little bit better. Like you know what I mean? I don't think it's a bad thing to figure out how to effectively use that. I mean, and also part of it is that people do have low confidence when it comes to like how your taxes are getting used. Generally, they get used like decently. Um, but then there's also like people like, okay, I don't know if it's going to be used well. Blah blah blah. Fuck it. So you know, greed had gender. It was uh, well, men tend to well. First of all, it was like a, like half a joke, but men tend to be more motivated to um like career motivated than women <laughs> I mean, but it was a fucking joke about her, her having higher testosterone so it's not, it's not that serious this is according to yahoo so in general the reason why i just bet in the overall bet it is technically a bet i just go into the overall market it's because i don't think the united states has that major competitor that would make it by the time we retire that we would be a, a smaller economy like I really don't, so I'm just. No, I don't think it'll be smaller. I just don't know if it'll grow by the time I retire. But I guess it depends when I retire. Right? Is that like two or three years? Is it five years? Is it ten years? Okay. I don't. Really I know just what know I a lot of people retire. that don't invest in the overall market. They have a lot of doom and gloom behind them. And I'm just going off of historical performance since you know the S and P 500 was created. It's about it's like if like America becomes number two, then we're just fucked as a country in general. No. So. Ten percent a year. What is it? It's like eight to twelve percent on average. So like ten percent, dude. Money just put in there, less complicated, not investing advice, less complicated. We draw 3% a year. You never run out of money. It most likely just grows yeah. $1.35 million no, a year. No, it's very sound. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to do that more after the final capital calls for sure. I'll probably look more into it too when I get back. Um, but what uh, my accountant's saying right now is the reason why is we're assigning gas stations as zeros because we're waiting for like the, the 1031 transfer to yep. unlock that value. Sure. So conservatively, for the same thing for the orchard. So conservatively, about like forty million still, roughly. Really? Okay. Yeah. On a conservative, oh, they, they, like, they like to give me numbers conservatively because I tell them don't get my hopes up. Yeah. Like well, let's I go for same. like the economy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's then I feel safe. Then I'm not like oh I'll bite my nails, you know, if I like want to spend a lot of money on like a huge property. And then yeah. No, I do the same when I talk to my people who help me buy properties up north. Okay. If you're anything like me, Jesus, there's so many ads in this. You understand how staring at screens are. Gay son or a thought daughter. I feel like it's the same thing. Okay. I want to hear me out. Hear me out with this one. First and foremost, I love gay people. I have a lot of gay friends. My wife has a lot of gay friends. But here's the thing about here's the thing about gay dudes. Okay, and this is why I wish I kind of wish I was like at least bisexual. Men in general like to they like to lay they like they're plumbers. You know what I mean? They like to lay plumbing. They like to put down plumbing, lay pipe, some would call it. Women tend to not, I mean, women enjoy 
uh, being houses that have plumbing laid into them, of course. But they usually like to do it with people they love at a generally higher rate, of course. Not, you know, there's men that are more emotional and women who are a little more physical, but you understand. But if you're a dude and you're into other dudes, I mean, you guys have a mutual understanding of like, yeah, we're just, let's just go check out my plumbing. Might not be the most traditional plumbing, but it feels good. Or so I've heard. So it's like, I feel like, if you got a gay son, I mean, they're maybe they they also might end up unintentionally becoming a little bit of thought because men without regulation are just fucking they're blasting away. I know that from personal experience. So I feel like same diff a little bit. If you think about it like that, okay. I think about it. You're a guy. You go to a gay bar. Everybody's gonna want you know. Oh yeah, let's do it. Eh. You know, it's different. It's an incredible thing. All day can really wow. take Maybe a toll on your eyes. Right That's why I'm excited to talk about my experience with today's wow. sponsor, Orby Parker. And let me tell you, it's been awesome. First off, the selection is incredible, with frames starting at just $95. This includes prescription lenses with UV protection. They've Whoa. got something for everyone. Well, I don't go outside, so I don't need that. Everyone. And speaking of selection, their home try-on program is genius. You get Whoa. to try five pairs at home for free with no strings. Yeah, I'm going to say, like, I have a big head. Dude, I'm like mining so slow. I have such a big head that I feel like I have to go try stuff on at the store because my head is fucking massive you know I re- i'm not kidding i have a large head. I'm, I'm being serious my head was so big i almost broke my mother's pelvis coming out of her body and also <clears throat> um my head was wider than the width of my shoulders so that's not supposed to happen rings attached plus they'll recommend frames tailored for your style and fit preferences wow. taking care of your eyes can look good too i hope because I wear them every day. Also, uh, shipping is free both ways, so when trying out a pair, it's completely risk-free. Oh, You're going to love the experience of Warby that, Parker man. as much as I have these last few years. Head over to warbyparker.com slash hammer dude. right now oh. to take the home try-on quiz and pick five pairs of frames to try in at home for free. That's warbyparker.com slash hammer. And I, I like getting I into the complicated things. Oh, I get into the complicated is. things when I do my property stuff. So it's not like I'm like fully against that. I'm just trying to show, you said you wanted a million dollars a year yeah. in guaranteed income. Yeah. Technically, I think you could be there if you wanted so. to be right I, now. I think so, too. I'm more of just concerned about, like, things in the market not going well, I guess. Yeah, like wieners spying your porn. Yeah, I get that. Okay, fuck it. I just like buy. to play things safe, especially when I already have, um like, terms like the kick deal where it's, like, I'm locked in for a certain amount of years and I always have, yeah. like, other, like, yearly contracts with other websites that'll, like, pay me to, to stream there or whatever. It's like... If the market doesn't do well, though, how are those small businesses going to do well? Like, if the market isn't performing well, how are all those other business ventures usually going to do well? Because if the market's not performing well, the economy's not doing very well. Right. If the economy's not doing well, those yeah. businesses are not doing well. So why not just invest in the market? I think this one, it's like when I started investing in it, it was going to ensure me like a bigger kickback faster than just the index funds. And obviously, like now, it probably wouldn't make sense for me at the scale that that private equity has to do it now. But I kind of started that before I was making a million dollars a month. So mm, yeah, yeah I think course. the index is. I understand. A million dollars a month. Me too. Doing with really the best advice for people. And then on the business ventures, we already <laughs> mentioned the fart, which is just absolutely You say the fart? Absolutely wild, but you made a killing, so what? Fart cars! It's great. You sold out, right? I mean, does it really ever sell out? Does it? Well, on the website, it said sell out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could okay. bring it back whenever I want to, but... How much did I, you make off of it in total by the end? Let's see. I think each was... was I don't remember. I did hot tub jar waters, too, at the time, so I can't remember which price was what. Well, okay. So- what? The hot tub jar? That's disgusting. Do you drink that? So it's marked on the website for the cutie patooties as a thousand dollars each, but marked down to four ninety nine. So yeah. I don't know what the actual sale my farts was. my farts went down in value after a while. Hey got- Hold on. Each but marked down to four ninety nine. Oh my god. So yeah. I don't know what the actual sale my farts was. my farts. What a niche market dude. Farts went down in value after a while. Hey got- I mean, I can't imagine you can't be fart. When didn't one girl end up in the hospital because she was making so much fart stuff for people? What a tough life. Am I bigger than Queso? I might be, dude. I don't know. We'd, we'd probably, I mean, I'm fucking 340. I'm 6'4. I am 6 i do not know how big he is. Uh, you know, less protein in the diet. Got to kick that back up. And then you upsold the hot water jars for $200, but it's marked down to 49 Yeah, that's because I don't want to get in the hot tub anymore. So it's just, it would be like, you know, my dogs are in it too, tainting the water. Do you know how much? <laughs> what the fuck? How much you make? I'll buy dog water. Just kidding. Hey, across both of those? I'm curious. Uh, I want to say probably like uh, 100000 maybe. Okay. Then you launched the AI chatbot. You made $34,000 in the first day? Yeah. That- what the fuck? AI chat. <laughs> what the fuck? That's Insane. cool. How much have you made since? I think like on a, it hasn't been going enough for me to like get an average. Uh, I'd have to see how much. But oh I think God. about per week, it's probably like, mm, I got like 3000 or so a week right now. 
Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Three thousand dollars a week? Are you serious right now? That's like a, that's like one hundred fifty grand a year. Just wow! I wish that's a good amount of money. I'd be happy if I made that much. Are you kidding? You're not doing it's anything crazy. though. Crazy! It's just no, the it's AI the most talking to people. Thing. Well, did you have to buy into it? No, they, like, oh. they approached me and were like, "Will you let us do this and take a, a percentage of it?" And I was like, "Yeah, what is go for life? it." Life, you make so much money. <laughs> I know. Oh I my know. god. Oh God bless. I guess. Gosh. My producer's note says we should buy it. We're not buying it for your research, Noah. You okay. Weirdo. Like, I mean, if I, I would. I mean, honestly, I'm not going to because I don't care that much. But if I, I would, I would push. I would, I would let Noah buy it. Personally, I bet go for it, brother. They had a, they have like a, a free version that's fun to play with. At least it did for a bit. I don't know if they still offer it, but yeah, there was like a free. And then trial he says version. we should make one for me as well. We're also not doing that, Noah. Isn't I mean, I don't know. That's a novelty. Maybe some people would buy it for a second. Why do you? <laughs> okay, is there, is Noah real, or are you just saying these things yourself to desensitize your audience, Caleb? Mm -hmm. It'd be nope, kind sir. of dangerous for you because then they'd be asking you financial advice. Oh no! For me, they're just like it's like a uh, just a. Can't, you could probably still ask for financial advice. Has anybody tried asking the AI Amaranth chatbot for <laughs> financial advice? You know, I saw this interesting thing that said um, people need to stop asking the chatbots questions and need to start demanding answers because they'll get to a point where they'll like they're just trying to answer your question based on the way other people do. So like if you ask it to do a task, it could be like, no. <laughs> I don't know, I saw something weird like that. I was like, what the fuck? That's certainly very interesting. Um, you could probably make a pretty good wife at chatbot doing that, so interesting stuff. Person to talk to, kind of like MSN chatbots back in the day, but mine's more advanced so it remembers oh, every Christ. single conversation That's that so it's had a person. Eternal okay, memory. No, I'm gonna die. So. All of the purchases of that. Oh. Yeah. I mean, would you feel insulted or bad if I called them losers? No. Okay. Are they losers? Yeah. That's not nice, dude. Uh, it depends on the situation. Some people, absolutely. Like, if, if they're lonely because they chose not to get their life together and they just don't want to, you know, work or whatever it is, yeah, you would call that a loser. But some people have, like, such bad social anxiety that even though they go to a job, it's not they can afford to pay for, like, Doesn't their social anxiety that kind of thing. worse, though, if that's the route led? Not, of... not really, because usually they're turning to it as, an, as, oh, as a coping mechanism <laughs> for an already, like, problematic trait that they have. You know, it's kind of like an aspirin, I guess, for people who have that bad of social anxiety and have literally no one to talk to. Some people are just an really aspirin. lonely. They don't have family anymore. Yeah. They don't have friends. And so for a lonely... Yeah. And probably, I mean, it, it's difficult. I mean, you do obviously want to move towards a scenario where you start talking to people more and getting more social and getting out there. But that could be a little bit tough for a lot of people. It's easy to say, like, oh, become more social. But a lot of times we learn, like, social habits and behaviors, obviously, through... <clears throat> The real world and when there's less of those things happening because of the online age um then it makes it difficult because you haven't developed that pattern like back in the day people just like sent their kids outside and go play and have fun and you just meet kids, other kids on the block and etc 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 which was great nowadays people like are online playing video games and on top of that parents are afraid to let their kids leave the house i mean understandably so but they're like oh i don't want to let my kid out because they might get hurt because they're constantly getting fed information from social media like oh things are dangerous which they've always been um year after year things are safer <clears throat> but people are like they're they really are like there's a level of hysteria that's being engaged in so people are terrified to do anything and i think that that's a pretty big contributing factor as well and so your kid grows up they don't necessarily learn to socialize with people they get upset they you know that's kind of how the cycle perpetuates itself i mean if anything you could probably argue that's why um we need to focus more and more now on strong family values especially with bigger families because like that's going to be your friends moving forward like i you know i'm very thankful i have like uh like a lot of cousins i can be friends with and stuff we can go out and have social interactions and gatherings which helps a lot Especially since I have a very like I I'm social on my job right like I talk a lot but I'm not really social like a, in a personal way like I used to be when I used to work a real job and with people gravitating towards you know slowly getting more and more um, gravitating towards like working from home you're going to see less and less social behavior so it's a lot of shit going on person that's like taking an aspirin for your social meter or your loneliness it doesn't does it doesn't fix the issue but at least makes you feel better for a little bit. These questions, Noah just multi wrote, he just wrote the most insane questions. Everyone did their own research section, and Noah wrote the most insane questions. Well, let me hear them. And I you're you're asking, <laughs> and you're trying to get her to, to like, oh yeah, let me hear. Her. That's the the desire. That's your teaser. That's your tester. 
of like, I know I've these weird questions. He gets to put it on Noah. It's going to be some like insane question that like Caleb wanted to ask, but he wants to blame uh, fucking Noah for it. I want to hear. I like insane questions. Well, we already questions. did the, should I launch um, yes. Apparently I'm thinking. That was him testing. Like, would you fuck me? Or would you let me fuck you? I actually could see Caleb fuck letting her fuck him. That would be int- I would. <laughs> I don't know if I want to pay for that. That'd be wild shit. But I might. I'd be like, let me watch you peg Caleb. But uh, would you? Because he, because we know he's a little, we know he's a little fruity. No, he's a little gay. Which is nothing wrong with that. And yes, if you get pegged even by a girl that is gay. In fact, I always say this a lot. It's gayer to get pegged by a woman than to get fucked by like a trans woman. Because at least if you're getting fucked by a trans woman or you're sucking a trans woman's wiener, that's a woman. Like, yeah, it might be like a typical male appendage, typically a male appendage, but you're still pleasuring a woman. But if you're getting fucked by a, a lesbian or a woman's dildo, you're not pleasuring her. You know, you're pleasuring yourself on her. She might as well be. It's, it's gay. Okay. It's gay. I'm thinking about selling my kidney stones to the audience. Can you help with the packaging? <laughs> oh my god. The packaging. We'll just. How many kidney stones do you have, brother? Do that picture you showed me earlier on the couch. Don't nail me, dude. It's a fucking thing fast. Yeah. Thank you so much for the small one. Most small guy from Sleek the Geek. How much is her axe getting alimony? I don't know, dude. Thank you so much, Admiral Abdomen. Burning the midnight oil. Love the videos, BB girl. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for the 13 month small gut from Dimitoriasu. Hey, Papa, got a new viewer here. Not impressed. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> how do you prepare to fart a thousand times? You just got to eat like shit. <laughs> I feel like that just happens See, naturally. I wasn't doing it at per demand, right? It was more of like I, I just had jars in the bathroom. And because you know I take care of my fitness, I have a lot of protein. When I go to the bathroom, usually there's like a wall of gas before you take the defecation and it's just like i'm gonna fill jars because oh it's gosh. right there right there on the floor there's literally only one thing that grosses me out in this world and it's poop well but, i'm not pooping in the jar well yeah let's, we're, it's <laughs> that's almost that's there, extra though. that's extra that's that's is there a specific 2, pose a warm-up routine a methodology behind the perfect fart yeah when you eat a lot of protein you do fart a lot so oh pro- finance show just protein you also fart a lot if you eat a lot of farts i don't know if you guys know that so protein bars protein shakes uh, you know meat all shit. of it eggs not do it uh, how much do you uh, i'm this is let me tell you a secret though you think like who buys these sometimes it's not about who buys them but it's about who writes about them who it's, writes like the news it's earned media yes uh. articles and virality and then youtubers will often like react to it and then you can even send like in my case the fart jars i send youtubers like social media care mm-hmm. packages and i'm just oh my god i gotta i gotta get more influential gonna be one of those it's giving them free content <laughs> and they're giving me free publicity i'm glad i wasn't a big enough youtuber when that was <laughs> happening bro i would have fucking opened it up and smelled it i'm not even fucking around dude i'm the fucking degenerate and you would have too they killed you bitch i fucking know you i are i already know you caleb i know you I mean, well you are now would you like a care package you have a bathroom here I oh my gosh uh i'm reading this for exactly what was written uh, how much did you make selling beer Root beer? What? Oh, that website's actually launching today. It hasn't really? the pre-sales go up today. Yeah, pre-orders. How much? Does it um, I don't know. I haven't looked at the website yet. Uh, do you have any uh, left? Caleb can buy. I can just give you some. What was it that she said? The yeast? Because they make beer out of her own yeast. Is that what they're saying? Give your whole. I'll give your whole office. Give like, Noah them. I give you a few cases. I need him to. Bro, do you know that Noah doesn't exist? Noah's a fucking character in this guy's mind. He's a degenerate. Caleb, I fucking know you, dude. I know you, brother. I know you are a dirty motherfucking dog. I'm cool with it, brother. Don't even worry about it. Ooh, what should I do? A final question from Noah, the animal. He's the one doing the post-show interview, so this is... Let's shut the high explosive. This is going to be great if this is what he's writing down. We were thinking about a whiskey distilled with just a hint of Caleb's ball sweat. Any thoughts? Is that legal? That's amazing. I am so sorry. No, I love this. Don't be sorry to me. I'm the most... He's not sorry. He's doing it on purpose. Get the fuck out of here. It's a degenerate embracing person ah, I know. I embrace yeah. it. It's all fun in the end. Think about all the degenerate stuff people do for free. You've heard about it from True. And they come to your show asking for help. I've just met you. <laughs> I will do this with friends that I. Bro, he's gonna end up being her like femboy fucking hookup or something, man. What the hell? No, for like a couple of months. I just met. Well, you. we can be friends. <laughs> I see a real relationship budding here. Hmm. Yeah. It's up. What is the website? The website is essence. Like essence. Oh, right. speed. So I, I should have got the explosive. Essence dot beer. How much do you get from this? Oh, it's a fucking beer. She, like legitimately a beer that she makes from like her yeast or like. Oh my god, that's what I'm imagining. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not like thinking about it, like imagining. That's what I'm at. 
It's a phrase. It's a phrase, guys. Shut up. Uh, it depends on how much sells, I guess. But like a beer sells for 20 bucks. What do you get? I have to ask. I don't remember. I'm, I'm sure. more, I, so this kind of stuff, I don't do it for an economic standpoint. I do it for the virality of it and the, the relevancy from people yeah. reacting and posting about it. <laughs> Honestly, God, that makes so much sense. <laughs> I don't do I do not do the weird beer for the money. I do it so Moist Critical reacts to it and goes, oh, hey, guys, this is fucking weird as shit. Hey, guys, uh, so I didn't think things getting any lower. Uh, Amaranth is <laughs> selling your fucking pussy beer. <clears throat> I actually bought it and I tried it. I haven't tasted anything this foul. Since I bought one of Sonic the Hedgehog's old socks and licked it sweat. You know, something like that. Am I sounding kind of like... I feel like I don't I don't think I, I hit the voice particularly well. But I think it's the thought that counts. It's incredible stuff. It's fun. It's just like... Yeah, that's it's just, just, like it's I, fun and silly. It, it could be like the smallest amount and it would still be worth it for stuff like this. What is it? Have you tasted it? No, I, I haven't yet. Are it, you going to taste it? Mm, maybe I'm gonna let other people taste it first though is it just gonna taste like beer I should because all beer has yeast in it right yeah it's more of just a commodity I think that, that this yeast was every beer can profile have it right they well, yeah they, they they use yeast to like so, usually it's yeast from bread or something so they but, take a little bit of your yeast and then they just continue to grow it yeah they like match the profile of how they get them pegged was that good <laughs> but exactly you know make oh, sure Jesus. it's like still consistent oh, right Jesus. so oh god oh lord Nice. That's and weird. all the people that are like the, va the the pacing was off, but the tone was there. Okay, I'm, uh, that was my first time trying on ironically. So, you know, can't can't. Uh, you know. Ew! I'm like, do y'all not? Are y'all not? I've never actually tried to do his voice before, so that was. I don't think I have. So uh, that was pretty good, I think, for a first time, first time buyer. Lunches for your girl, like, geez. When that the beer pie. Did you say that? Well, like, do y'all not? Are y'all not munches for your girl, like? Oh my God, Amaranth, are you fucking? Are you hitting on Caleb right now? He's trying. She's trying to see if Caleb's got a girlfriend, bro. I, I, I actually, unironically, would potentially, I could potentially ship these two. Oh my god, what the fuck am I getting hit by, dude? This is so stupid. A smooth criminal, which is Caleb, by the way. He's the smooth criminal right now. This dirty ass dog. Oh my god, guys. Jeez. When that the beer part tastes less like that than straight from Caleb, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> just, we have a thing here called the Hammer Financial Score. This is where you get. Ah, uh, you got a number one. Yours is a fucking number one girl. Give yourself a score overall. Which is probably just going to say 10 out of 10, no? Zero to 10. Do 10. I even apply uh, to be on the, 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 the scale? Like, is there like a. Is there like a, a on scale? scale? I'm a seven okay. out of 10. Oh, why are you only a seven? Because uh, I like to 0% finance some things, okay. but that adds risk, so that negates some things. Okay. Have okay. Some what does that add risk? Do you get the fuck away from me? Sorry. Just find out. What, what would you give yourself? Zero to 10. 10 being the absolute best. You can get no better. Zero being you can get no worse. Mm, probably an eight. <laughs> eight. Probably an eight. You can get your hammer financial score for free in the description below. See, I know how to plug things. Let's see. Spending in a budget. Well, if your spending was for the average American, it would be just absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. It'd be crazy to even be able to spend that much. But? But you're so hot. You're not the average. Are you going to pay the net? It's absolutely fantastic. But you're not an average American. Can we do OnlyFans together? <laughs> I'm waiting for it. I mean, it's 10 out of 10 for spending a budget. Because like you fit in the 50, 30, 20 easily. 50% on needs, 30% on wants, 20% on investing. Yeah. You're investing way beyond that. So, debt. Technically, you have mortgages. Right, but doesn't everybody? Well, yeah. The mortgage is usually a good debt. Mortgage, I think school loan is considered good debt. So maybe car loans? I don't know. And I find them to be good debts. <laughs> However, they are technically a risk profile. Mm. Uh, it's going to be an 8 out of 10 for debt, which is actually really good, though. Right. It's really good. If you think 5 is like average. Right. Sure. 8 is really good. I'll emergency fund? Do you have an emergency? Debt in a better position maybe because they're good debt, barring you to invest in small business. Okay. So, yeah. Education, business, and home. Sure. That makes sense. Bad debt. Car okay. Cars are bad. Right. Because it's a depreciation. It's pretty high. It makes sense. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Jack Stu. For the eight months king gut damn brother jesus christ that's fucking 25 dollars a month my man thank you i'll sell you i'll send you my farts uh i'm not gonna do that <laughs> mr gut how are you doing this on this fine evening not too bad my man it's like almost 12 in the in the morning but it is a fine night i appreciate that and almost morning i'm doing all right how you doing brother hopefully you're doing well i'm fucking my ass bitch pushed in this fucking game it's fun. yeah i mean you pretty i mean you have cash are you trying now. to lose um you just took an epic you didn't need when you should have just healed what are you talking i fucking healed what are you done i literally healed are you still are you a little stinky little goose are you a smelly little poopy goose boy like are you fucking silly i literally healed you, you don't even understand mathematics bro she had the fuck out of my stream 
You're trying to fucking school me. Now you're going to be distracted and I'm going to die. Everywhere. Yeah. My, I would say any amount of uh, any stocks okay. could be an emergency fund in mm. theory. If Because I don't need it, right? It's more Excuse of just my me? fun goal. This yeah, but emergency fund for a business owner. I'd like come 12 on, months of on, literally just on, what it takes to survive. Set aside in a high yield savings. I mean, like I, I, I have, I never have, I never have less than like $200,000 in any account. So, I mean, I guess technically... Yeah. You have it. It's just it's just sitting like a checking account. Yeah. Ten out of ten there. Retirement. Yeah, you know, just maxing it out. Getting a little weird, a little finessey, but ten out of ten. Hmm. I wonder okay. what the private equity. Maybe I should knock off a point just because it's extra risk, even though it could it yeah. could play out and be wild. I'm right. gonna do a nine out of ten because it on. does increase true risk. Real estate. Um it's great. So to get the perfect what's your fake estate score and people hate this but i just think of like what's the best of the best finances like mm -hmm. any individual I just, I just walked into like a small minion because i didn't see it on the other side of the fucking wall who could have anywhere it's like multiple fully paid off cash flowing rental properties is like the perfect real estate right um trust me a seven is still great i'm a seven so i'm thinking what would you think now. is the perfect real estate by the way like what type my fucking balls exploding in my mouth right now is the perfect real estate to invest in uh well my preferred real estate is if i'm getting <sighs> a property to rent out residential wise i'm getting a minimum 12 percent cash on cash return mm -hmm. so whatever i put into it i want to see a 12 percent return immediately is that just like basis. suburban homes or is that like apartment that's how complexes i started or yeah okay. i started uh, uh houses off of my old college campus okay. and then now i'm buying like uh quadplexes and stuff like that now the next thing i'm saving up for is maybe an apartment complex are, are college kids like nice to the house i haven't had any issues but a lot of people have had issues like okay. i think if i if i bought in like fratville yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking, like yeah. frat houses. But what are you taking advantage of nice Asian kids to go to school? <laughs> this Party is just, houses. This is the more chill area. Mm. I know the area well. Okay. And Start. it's my Something home. Something to so. keep in mind, yeah. Real estate, 8 out of 10. That's fair. That's about what I was thinking. You're not renting out the second place, but you're also getting in the gas station. But anything about real estate? Um, I don't. I don't. I, know it's my, I don't. I really don't. It's funny because my father was in real estate, uh, but like, you know, he abandoned my mother, so I never learned. <laughs> Things, yeah. but she also has some leverage, which does. I might run it out risk. soon. We'll see. Hammer financial score nine out of ten. Oh, okay. See, nine I'm very conservative with myself. I'm like, oh. I try to be the the moderate side of realistic expectations. I don't like to live in delusion. Yeah. So, so oh. you, Graham, Steph, and Jack Selby, uh, they're the only ones I've done hammer financial scores so far for. Now Mr. Beast Yeast Beer coming, <laughs> coming this October. Mr. Beast Yeast Beer. That'd be fucking interesting. You think you get like his asshole yeast or something? It's wild. Nine out of ten. Out okay. Of 10. Yeah. yeah, I feel like for the investment side, I'm probably missing out on a lot oh, of opportunities just because I haven't had the personal time to look out. into it. Because oh, I'm sure. trying to just stream so much. So I feel like there's a lot more safer and better right. investments uh, I could right. be making. So hopefully I can figure those out soon. How many hours a day do you stream? Um, Usually around, lately it's been like 12 to 15. Why? How do you even get pleasure out of doing it for that long? That's crazy. That is so fucking crazy, man. That's just wild to me. It's just so much. And that's how it's been like that way for years, though. So now you see why I'm like, oh, sure. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Stuff. Well, I was just like, take care of it. Thanks. So is your audience yeah. freaking out that you're not streaming right now? No, I told them I was coming on the show. And they're looking forward oh. to stream later. So. Oh, wow. That's wild. I just feel like that's so toxic to do that much. I mean, listen, make your money, I guess. But Jesus Christ, it's just fucking insane to do that much. Why the fuck is this not? Okay, there we go. It's just so insane to do that much. I could probably make okay. this. Interesting. Yeah. Today on the Financial Audit uh, Post Show. Amaranth, Caleb, Smasher Pass. <laughs> if he, what? He just goes bald. That's just more room for sitting on faces. Okay. I love you. I fucking, I knew that this was, they're, they're hitting on each other, dude. They're hitting on each other. <laughs> What's um, the worst condition you've ever left a car in after an OF video? <laughs> is what he wrote down. To watch the Financial Audit. Is that, the, is that fake whatever his name is? Mingle? Whatever the fuck that guy's name is? Chum? I don't know. Post show, click the join button. People below. watch 12 hour stream. Oh, All right. Interesting video, dude. Interesting.